Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Overwatch 2 Yo, Developer it's Matt! live stream. I'm your host, Matt Mr. X, and throughout the stream, I'll be joined by some awesome content. He sounds almost not like an idiot. Overwatch team as we learn more about Overwatch 2's PvP by watching some of these awesome maps in action. Why isn't he talking in all caps? It's going to be an extremely exciting day. As uh, Aaron mentioned during the developer update, uh, everything you see today is work in progress. Uh, but, you know, ladder, you guys want a ladder? This stuff, you know, day in and day out. Uh, it's truly awesome. Really excited for there what the Overwatch team has to show for you guys today. So let's bring on some of my guests uh, throughout the day. Uh, I'll be joined by the members of the Overwatch dev team. It's Associate Art Director Dion Rogers, Lead Hero Designer Jeff Goodman, and Game Director Aaron Keller. How are you guys feeling today? Yeah, so much for having us. Yeah, no, uh, it, it's going to be exciting. Now, we've learned so much about the PvE aspect uh, of Where's Overwatch Jeff? 2. We've Don't learned some stuff about you know, PvP you know, with uh, push, roll pass, ah! divs, uh, you know, new heroes. You saw Sojourn at BlizzCon Line. Uh, this what map was else really has good. gone into the development process for Overwatch 2's PvP? You're right. We've talked a lot about the story side of, of Overwatch 2 and the, the cooperative PvE experience that that we've been working on. But the Overwatch team has also been hard at work on the PvP side of the game. We're making new features, new heroes, new maps, some Pizza of which we'll be playing today. <gasps> new and heroes! we've also been looking at the way PvP is played. Um, it, it's changed over time on, on the live game. Right. And we get a couple of things. We'll talk about a lot of the changes that, that we want to be making and that we're currently making um, to PvP, but there's one in particular that I want to highlight an S, right yeah. now um, because it's substantial and I think it oh, has a big impact on the way the entire team coming out early. approaches PvP on Overwatch 2. And it's, it's also something that we're all really excited about. Overwatch has always been played with two teams of six players. Oh shit, they're doing Overwatch it. Overwatch 2 will be played with two teams of five players five v consisting five. of two support two dps oh they're putting it in one, one tank. tank right i was gonna Ooh. i mean my next question was gonna be like okay like is roll queue still a thing so we still have we still have a breakdown across the board it's, it's okay. not completely open so one tank two dps two supports uh, I, what I, led let, you let guys hear him out everyone stop saying no change? everyone calm down there let's give us some are a lot of reasons for why we want let's hear him out let's hear him out as i said earlier overwatch has has changed over time um we've we've gone from My having no types. hero limits at all in the game before launch you could pick six winstons if you wanted to for for your team composition to having a hero limit we ended up introducing a roll lock um over the course of the game and we feel like this is the next step in the way that feedback. overwatch ought to be played if you think about it there is a lot going on in an Overwatch map. It is incredibly fast paced. And we have always tried to make our combat easy to read and very understandable. And even with all of the work that we put into okay. that, sometimes it's just hard to track what 11 other players are doing on the battlefield. Removing two of those simplifies everything and it allows players to understand everything that's happening around them and to be able to make better choices because of it. Um, yeah, this tank change players are fucking has a really big. Tank players are tanks. in shambles um, and right now. We will now. get into some <laughs> of the changes that that we're making to tanks and and to some of the other some of the other roles in a bit. But tanks can be problematic. They they're a DPS hero is simple. They're they're shooting. Um, but but a tank has abilities that can be noisy um, or when stacked. Hello? with other tanks can can cause problems for other teams to to try to to try to overcome and counter like oh, and, God, and a great example of that 
is two main tanks on the field. Sometimes that can be very so Zaya, impressive to what I'm team. taking from this is that um, Zaya still exists in I the game in her current iteration, with five, right? With five players, she doesn't out look there, like she's changed. There is a greater chance of it looks of like she can, she has two shields there. Whether Did you see that? That was two bubbles. She has two bubbles where she can choose There's if she wants to do two projected or one that that or double self. And each player now has yeah, the opportunity charges, like an to have a larger individual impact on their own team. And we've we've tried a lot of different versions of this. Um, internally, we've tried a four v four format. We've tried oh. a, a three DPS, two support, one tank format. We even early on in in Overwatch development, Rip game. we tried it's a fine. seven v seven. It's gonna be fine. Let's see how it plays. Let's I mean, see how it plays. We, we I don't know how five v five is gonna play with out. them. And this is the sort of thing. I think that it's our, interesting. Our I think that's Jeff how you Goodman fix the game of really the issue of tanks. And I think in this he game. probably has a little a little more he can say about it. Yeah, you forgot about the four DPS, one tank, one healer we ran one time. That was, that was literally one play test. And it was that like, was one and the, play test, and we, we yeah, swore like, we would never do it again. Almost cut out in the middle of that play never to be Never to be spoken about again. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Jeff, I assume that uh, obviously, you know, changes to the tank role, but I assume there will be kind of like holistic changes overall, right? I think just changing the tanks, you probably need to rework some of the other stuff that goes on. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a kind of change... So uh, yeah. that imp impacts like the huge part of the game, obviously. And it, um, that's the thing about sort of hero design and hero balance is like, it's sort of easy in some sense. Well, it's easy, but it, it's certainly yeah, easier to make that. sort of a single hero change and you know maybe even like a hero rework like we've done in the past. But to change something so fundamental as, you know, there's only one tank allowed um, really kind of cascades into a lot of different questions and, and, and you know, uh, problems that demand answers so i mean the obvious thing that probably yeah. comes up in people's mind probably immediately when we say this is how does roadhog work in a world where you could pick reinhardt instead um like how do they how is that as a, um in a true pick i'll also so play it take players are shaking question, legitimately we're doing it too like we like this 5v5 thing it was super fun when we play tested it and it has a lot of promise but okay we have to solve a lot of problems if we go this way um so that's sort of why it sort of has led to this larger set of changes and there's a lot of other changes we'll talk about as well um but it, it definitely um cascades you know for example healing just healing you can kind of focus on one tank now and tanks are even beefier than the yeah i think you can reduce tanks, healing across the board as well so we're now we're thinking well is it is it too good to just play like two main healers and dump healing in your tank and is it too hard to kill now and maybe healing is too good now and yeah you know, nerf just, healing it's, it's, i think you that opens but this is the time to do by it. taking a tank out of, i think by taking a tank out you can reduce like healing significantly sure that, that we want them to be and uh, it's been a lot of fun yeah i was gonna say like uh you know, uh, I'm not a designer, but I think that like this is the first real opportunity you guys have had to reset. Like you couldn't just do this right. on the live game, right? Uh, I th I think that's kind of like the, what I what I assume. You can right, also make tanks like super strong, yeah, because you only have one, overall, right? All and like changes that you couldn't do on live because they're just so massive. Exactly, and like I said, there's other changes that go along with this as well. I'm not hating this entirely. Uh, also I trust them that if they so played 5v5 sort of like, and they said it felt good. It just like shook the ground underneath the game like really heavily and like all the pieces are kind of in disarray <laughs> a little bit. So some of the heroes won't even be playable really by our, our, our playtesters here because um, they're either heroes we're already kind of looking at heavily, we plan on looking at heavily, so it's kind of not worth Did you just say playtest? Or ones that we haven't addressed yet, things like that. So um, that just sort of gives you context of like how big this kind of change is. Well, uh, I I want to get right into the game. Uh, oh, I yeah. want to see it live. I'm sure the fans want to see play. it live after getting all this like info. Uh, the first map we're going to be showing you guys today is New York City. Uh, Dion, what kind of map is this? Um, Yo, New York is New a York. hybrid map, so a brand new hybrid map for Overwatch 2. And I miss Ryan's art. I think it opens up so many cool the changes that they can make to the game. Great time, just creating this Overwatch depiction of New York. It's tons of neat, neat details and fun Easter eggs for the players to find. So I, I think it, it should be fun to take a look at this. Yeah, no, uh, I when you guys showed this at uh, BlizzCon Line, I was so excited. Obviously from New York uh, myself, would love to see the Midtown Tunnel go over uh, some of the adjustments that you guys have made uh, to it here uh, in, in Overwatch 2. Uh, just. Yeah, just a, a beautiful map. I have to imagine this is one of the locales that you guys have been dying to do for a while. We've been wanting to. There's a lot of five v five for real. Yeah, five v five confirmed. Spent some part of their life there, so it's always been on the list. And Overwatch Two felt like the right time to do it. 
Yeah, nah, uh, uh, no short of Easter eggs, I would say. Uh, no. You know, <laughs> on some of these maps so far. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, get, get, get some love at the beginning. But uh, yeah, this will be our first real look at 5v5. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity to like kind of watch some games like as they've kind of tested it out. Uh, it, it's, it still keeps that Overwatch yeah, you know, fast paced feel, but it uh it doesn't have like the you know the kind of the the clumped up chaos that you sometimes see of live i think new yorkings kind of right. really what you're <laughs> pointing to jeff is that that when you have you know that one less tank in the equation you can actually make w the tanks more aggressive and more i wonder offensive. if they're going to change maps uh, at all but it's also just kind of easier for the viewer and just people at home to track yeah absolutely and um you'll see probably a lot of play here one of the biggest things you'll notice because there's less protection uh, from coming from tank players just to directly block bullets for the team. It looks so weird. Uh, Look at this. It's five v five. Player on the map. It just and my angles, brain is just uh, like it's like, like it's like it's missing something. It's like yeah, freaking out. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you have to use the uh, environment a lot more. It's a bit more tactical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, look exactly at Reinhardt's new artwork. Um, Reinhardt, so kind of, Genji's you know, new artwork. That was Lucio's new artwork. I assume that's Lucio Mercy's new artwork. This is a really good direction. I mean, like I mentioned, there's like. You know, as a designer, you sort of have to look past the immediate like problems in front of you and like, okay, we can fix those. <laughs> like, I think we can address uh, you know some of the like tank imbalances and healing issues and all kinds of other stuff. But th at the heart of this, which is really cool, and so that's that's really what we've been focusing on. This map looks so cool. Problems. I think something that's really interesting about that too is the the gameplay is is more fluid. No, than off it was tanks before. already. Oh, yeah. a, a lot of times in Overwatch, you get these these really hard battle lines that that get drawn between the two teams um and Hello? there's just less damage incoming. is this me or is this um, the stream and so you're able to kind of move me. around let me go down one at the heart of this which is really cool oh, God. so that's that's really what we've been focusing on and working through these problems Sorry. i think something that's really interesting about that too is that the gameplay the is stream is more uh, i'm gonna go down with the quality still these, these really hard battle lines that, that get drawn between the two teams um and there's just less damage incoming um and so you're able to kind of move around a little bit more and um you'll see it here a lot of times um the chokes are as hard of a space you can to, like fight in the subway you have to work at it but there can be a lot more so like, the, there's an upper area, area and a lower area that i'm like personally, cool. personally really excited about yeah i was gonna say uh, how is uh the 5v5 move affected map <laughs> i feel like it kind of has to have a huge effect on you know, what you guys are able to do create different you know, speaking about like players being able to take more control of the game right you know, creating more flanking routes you know, more opportunity for you know the ash to go to the side sorry you know, stop you know, for a second guys Yeah, there's a lot more opportunity um, for, for like players it. to do that. Um, but at the same time, um, when when you go for a flank, you're not leaving five players behind. You're leaving four <laughs> players behind. And so you, you kind of have to be weighing some of these decisions in your head. The game is just as strategic as it was before, um, if not more so because of the, the, the individual ability for players to have such a large impact this, on the match. Deadly um, I think strong. for map design, We've always been ults are going um, up very slowly. Really careful to make spaces that feel good. Look at good how little ult charge everyone has in minute hero. and a half. Um, and they sometimes definitely slow we down might favor a lot. particular heroes in different areas. Um, but because of that, because we're able to monkey to make right a space quick? Wait, what's monkey right quick? I didn't see Reaper that. Or a space that feels good for Farah. Um, I think that we'll still be able to play five v five on having all less of the up to shoot at. Catalog yeah, of Overwatch. I guess that's well. true. Unless and right, that is a awesome payload, Dion. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we've always in in the art. That is of actually the map, such a good payload. <laughs> we consider cover objects. The it fire just truck. Now with the five v five, players will take advantage of that more. You know, Genji even looks exactly the same. We we planned cover objects to help protect. Players. Oh, Genji, run! Now with five v five, they're even more effective. These 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 artistic choices. It's such a great point too because we have started placing a little bit more cover in our maps. And if you go back yeah, to there's some a of the lot old of maps, cover. Like there's a lot of Kings shit Row, on this map. That middle section, that street section of King's Row, there's on, one bro. piece of cover in that entire <laughs> section. Yes. It's just corners of buildings is what you're using. Dev tracking yeah, it. No, that, that's a that's a great point. I think you can kind of see it here even with uh, you know stuff like that. I know the taxis here in the streets. You know, you have the little kind of windows, the pillar to hide behind in the middle. Uh, there's a route through the subway. There's so many different kind of angles uh, you can take. Uh, something we saw uh, at BlizzCon line oh, was rip. the uh, two fire strike charge uh, cancel Reinhardt. Uh, I noticed something before Jeff when we were on with Winston. Uh, my Winston on live uh, not <laughs> able to shoot at range. <laughs> can you can right. you explain that to us? A little bit? <laughs> so yeah, I was wondering if people picked up on that. So we were first watching Winston there, 
Um, this is an example of, you know, some of the I want to see 5-5. Five five. I want to have a look um, at it. I want to see five, what also a larger changes. change we're talking about, making tanks uh, a lot more aggressive, be able to um, be a little more hybrid -y on the damage side and less just raw protection. Um, so on Winston's Good side... Good luck to Troy and Super. Um, unfortunately, you can't see it, but um, <laughs> he can't do it while he's ulting. But his, uh, oh. his alternate fire there, which he's doing right now, there it is, you can charge up like a condensed blast of lightning from his gun and fire it off as a single sort of like so is this uh, not me lagging this is this this range. is the game um, try trish stream so he actually the charge up is kind of interesting with it for him is this just a youtube thing and so there's like What's going on it theoretically more burst combos you can do where you're jumping on top of somebody charging up in the air and burst you know release it right before you land on them and then you get the stomp damage too and you can shock them or do quick melee i'm combo. gonna go to the um, twitch so hope that, on top fixes the fact it. that was kind of interesting with it for him because you could do it while you're leaping and so there's like theoretically more burst combos you can do where you're jumping on top of somebody charging up in the air and burst you know release it right before you land on them and then you get the stomp damage too and you can shock them or do a quick melee combo um it's a lot more interesting things on top of the fact that you know look at how players, small you know, that a lot of times you're you're, right on the you know, they're shield. getting away you think you can finish them and they just like you know fair abuse <laughs> yeah. away or somebody just barely gets away you get that extra you know, I do like that change though. I really like that Winston change. Giving them him it's just like a little bit of range. Him now because you now are cognizant of that. So <laughs> sometimes you're leaving a little earlier. Like, well, I'm gonna get blasted probably if I just like run away. So uh, I have to be able to survive that. Yeah, um, I think that's one of the decisions yo, always get him, in players get him face. Shadow it's like, okay, I've jumped on this what? player. I've gotten Team, them How did weak. they let that happen? I can either now get out of oh, my bubble dead. and try to finish them off, or just kind oh, of what the teammate does. But now getting him. I think it kind of goes back to more like that player, you know, agency that you were talking about, being able to kind of take over the game. Oh, frosty being able feet to in shambles. Uh, this uh, the nano boosted Ryan. Uh, th this will never get old. Uh, you know, just, just seeing their, just seeing Reinhardt nano. Some boosted, things will never change. Saying, nano boosted sure Ryan is still going to murder people. Happy that I uh, know that was a, a a dragon blade, a Elton Genji. He was able to take out his. Uh, <laughs> right. it's kind of Tardic Slot. I, I'm curious to know. Uh, ben actually uh, brought up a good point. Like, I guess the second I'm curious point, right? to know if the change feels different. Different. It feels like everyone's it. charging Saw. If they actually change the old charge, or if it's just because there's less people on the map, awesome. so, so less yeah, healing, so less damage, all that kind of, of stuff. The station and uh, uh, kind of curves around, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you can see the payload is driven by an Omni. I'm 15 seconds behind was, now. Uh, yeah, I, I well, don't know. I'd ra it's not stuttering direct, here, uh, so it's fine. I'd, I'd rather not stutter right, and be like a little bit behind because the stuttering was killing me. Yes, Chaco. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I, he's uh, gonna be a fan favorite. Oh, he's even got it on the back. I didn't realize. I thought it was like I thought it was like an unofficial name. Like oh, hero yeah, passes are given out. Yeah, they haven't talked about hero passes yet. Oh, they show you who you're healing on your he mercy healing bar. He's helped us out Interesting. They actually show you how much fitting. health they have as well. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Different little Bob. Oh, Bob, no. Uh, he's lived in um, New York as well, yeah, so he Bob. he helped out a lot on this map. So, and we have um, countless debates about the right. I like that messy UI change, change yeah. Well. <laughs> yes, right. Well, yeah, I mean, New York style pizza is the dominant. I feel pizza. like everything uh, is a I lot more the open. Water, they have more things to hide behind, but everything's a lot more a open. It's very. It, this map yeah, is really not like, choke heavy my, at all. My like, there are like the, no the tight chokes that may could just like blow you, you know? You look at King's Row, you look at Hollywood, they're very tight. This is so open. The new sounds, especially when like Ash shoots, that is something that, you know, it was discussed at BlizzCon Line, but I think it's different to kind of see it in action and also to see all of the other players. The gun sounds do sound good. Those audio changes, it just makes the game feel even more realistic. Yeah, the sounds can get really punchy and it just feels good. Oh, wow, listen to that gun. With these different heroes. Matt's going back to call it. So we've spent a lot of time not just developing what these Less exclusive high ground, yeah. How they play in different environments. So we've kind of upgraded the entire sound system across the game. Oh, pinned. Let's say when um, that ash is in a side room. That's such a cool. I actually love room. the gun sound. The really gun sound for soldier sounds so good. You understand where they're at and what type of environment that they're in better than you did before, and then you can kind of take that information and make different decisions, or or oh. additional decisions because of it. Right, Frosty so feet kind of popping up, dude. Yeah, Frosty feet kind of pounds. Not bad. Not bad in their first go. The, the hit scan sounds are so good. Are yeah. So competitive. I have to say this to the stream that. We were like, yeah, yeah, this is fun. Like, everybody have a great time. And then everyone's like, put your SR in the chat. We're going to make balance teams. <laughs> like, who's playing what? It's, uh, it's just, I feel like it's just the nature of Overwatch, right? Like, it, it always starts off, yeah, let's play for fun. And then maybe, maybe <laughs> you, you lose a game. You're like, all right. 
like uh, are, everybody pick it up like let's uh, <laughs> let's change things sideshow get it's off like my team when you, like you're playing relaxing your chair and then you lose and you ryan shards look slow i'm not sure what it, what's <laughs> cool yeah. <laughs> it, it's so it's, half it's of the out tanks are gonna lose their job in a year maybe like two and you're like you win one and then you're like all right play to lose and then you you, you lose a few it, more and then the next yeah, thing, yeah you know, maybe you up, but i like, yeah as i said i don't think it's a bad change for that obviously it sucks for a lot of out tanks and stuff like that so this will be an opportunity to see like roadhog has a i'm really interested to see how 5v5 feels like it's i i feel like it's impossible to give a good idea or or feedback like, on even it on uh, live right he just takes up so much it's gonna be so hard to give that feedback until you play it for yourself until you feel how open it does it feel empty because overwatch does get chaotic and that's what they're trying to identify and i think removing a tank also takes away a lot of the concerns of double shield people never dying these tanky brawl metas it sort of opens up the game so much more and gives more value towards supports and uh dps right so and you can just make tanks really strong that'll make people want to play tank because the biggest issue that exists in overwatch is nobody wants to fucking play tank because you just get bullied most of the time oh frosty feet speeding you know a lot more static defensively and have you know big is this gonna happen without this is overwatch 2 this will be that when overwatch league goes to overwatch 2 everything will happen like this Zaya change look yeah in this bottom right she has two charges so it kind of seems like the experimental change for that ladder rat after my mouse like uh, it kind of looks like the experimental change where kind of extra speed you could, you could, but, you had you know, two charges of, and you could do two of one people, at any point, uh, right? You could give away two bubbles, you could use two personal bubbles. Full of barriers and shields and honestly even sometimes when there's just, you know, the one Orisa blocking you with just the, the chain shields and it's just like, you know, people had comments like, oh, I just feel like I'm shooting shields all the yeah, time. Yeah, I agree, Tidy Cast. I also so, think like, we were definitely hearing all that. this is a weird, some of the balance changes we made in the past. Outside source thing as well. I think there's a lot of... I think there's a lot of esports is built around 5v5. There's so many 5v5 games, stages are built for 5v5, all these things are built for 5v5, and Overwatch has always been 6v6, which is fine, but I feel like it definitely would, I think 5v5 is going to ease a lot of those problems. You get, well, you can hit the ball right there, you can cancel it, but you can cancel your charge, and you can get two two fire strikes. Um, so you can cancel your charge and you get two fire strikes. charge is one of those like sneaky things that seems like to some people might be kind of a minor change, but it almost like completely about 77 yeah a lot of ways it's actually really fun because yeah it's gonna, can, yeah this will uh, fuck up overwatch league really rosters, and especially the tank cancel. lineups right? so you can like charge up to a group and then cancel and immediately ult and just like knock everyone down all tanks so yeah the fucking fact that worried. you can do that it's its own now like sort of mini game that people play where you can kind of bluff there's a limit on one tank yeah so ult, it's gonna be one two two charge with right one them, tank and they're trying not to get stunned like they don't want to fight you necessarily like, like normally because they don't want to get earth shattered so sometimes yeah. you can like bluff people and are running for cover and you didn't even have it or you save it or something so oh good block. also just allows him to you know get in there and be more aggressive without quirky turtle is just or popping or off yeah, it just sounds like another uh change almost like how you kind of mentioned like stuff like that winston combo kind of you know as you're as you're playing and testing and seeing all these different things like yeah where the winston combo you can you know load up that secondary fire come to, like get the jump you know damage, what this also somebody, probably means this also out. probably like, means that, that we're not going like to get many more tanks and we'll get more dps like and support play, because right, they, that they, means they, if they, they only have, have like, this one tank then they're not going to they already have so many tanks for one role right with one hero so there's probably going to be more dps and supports coming in overwatch 2 rather than tanks cancels and then shatters them all uh, yeah. being able to make plays like that. You think that, do you? So uh, well, no, okay. He's also you got know. the ability to um, to control his charge. More. Damn, this so widow gun sound. Listen to this. Corners more. Oh, oh, yeah. um, so the, dude, the that sounds so satisfying. He just murdered that Zaya. Um, I that think sounds sick. That's really interesting. Um, if you look at the, at, if people have noticed what's happening with Zarya, is she has two charges to her bubble now. Oh, um, but they share charges. Is the trick. It's actually what we play tested in uh, for the April Fools patch. So as people probably noted, like you know, some of those changes were a lot of them were just silly, kind of fun, like permanently flying Sigma. But you know, there were some changes we threw in there. It's like let's see how people react to this. I'm curious what people think. Like maybe this is something we can try. Uh, and Zarya bubbles is one of those things. So interesting. Uh, Aaron, you know it's something was, we just uh, recently kind of put in. Main, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't like this it font. It's as bad as Comic Sans. I like it. I think it looks Once very really clean. I just feel like change it changes, always is bad, right? Like you're always I more likely to be like, ah, oh, it's different. Therefore, I don't like it. Way, basically. <laughs> yeah, the kill feed is so small. Charge in and, and... Uh, I don't think it's any different. Yeah, we were joking about that the other day. Where, I just don't uh, think they highlighted it anymore. I'm like, 
yeah, like, like the the canceling the charge just feels so right that yeah. I, I, but you're so like trained to kind of how it is, like where you're just charging into walls. Right. <laughs> that I was like, wait, I was like, I don't have to do this anymore. No. Like I can just I can just go. Like, uh, it's it's such like a great quality of life change. Yeah. Yeah. Something it's else I, I think that's oh, really interesting here is this like this fight's been going on for a while. Neither tank has fallen. Um, and the, the oh, support yeah. have been doing such a good job at, at keeping the tanks up because there's there's only one of them. No, nah, blame that the they DPS. Have to actually, focus on. Dude, Frosty um, Feed is fucking a legend. Feel really, really good being the tank player now. Like the amount of times you get into this situation where it feels. I like the one You're tank at all. It seems so limiting. Um, People said the same thing when they added hero limits and you couldn't you, stack heroes. People were like, it seems so limiting. I don't have any freedom, but. Oh um, my god. It feels so they have incredibly good and you overall feel really it was so much better in the long run. As much yeah, as it feels uh, different, it feels it, limiting. It, it, Sometimes that limiting that allows you to be more from a versatile and, and more experimental with other things. Because the biggest issue the team with team a lot of the game right now exists is that there are two tanks always in the game. And two tanks are so impressive. Double shield, double dive heroes, double all this kind of stuff, a ton of you know, CC, a ton of negating abilities with Zaya bubbles, with Diva Matrix, all that kind of stuff. This is going to take it away from that and I think go back more towards being an FPS game and less towards being a MOBA game, in my opinion. Strategy is going to be less important and we're going to go back to the roots of this is an FPS game. That's how I feel it's going to go but we're, with this change because sometimes it doesn't even feel like you're shooting at anything ever and you're just like that. But look at this game was right now. Obviously, this isn't the highest level play we've ever seen, but I think the game will open up so much more. Focus so hard on a tank that even with like disc worker bottom, it's just I like, prefer the mobile aspect, and that's um, the thing is so I think that I think that too, if, so if that's what you like, then I don't think you're gonna like this change as much. Entirely, but yeah, especially because we're changing yeah. things all the time, I guess it's pretty hard for them to settle. But yeah, uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, uh, this Zen UI is uh, new. Oh yeah, uh, it actually looks really cool. Uh, is, this is something obviously that's uh, incredibly new. I think on live, like the it's kind of displayed on the right. Yeah, yeah we're generally um, looking through this. Oh, go ahead, sorry, Jeff. Yo, look at this oh, Zen stuff, yeah. Anywhere we can it's really cool. Uh, hero specific UI stuff. This is the Discord, this is the like healing world. Use you know, a big update and be a lot more readable. Time to go back yeah, to the Bastion. I think one of the things I'm most excited about with the, the healer UI is um, it's not just on Zen, but it's on Mercy also. You see the portrait of the, of the player that you're healing. Um, and so it's just a lot easier to, to kind of figure out who you've got um, instead of just using something like a nameplate. No, it's not. I watch because they'll complain. I mean, but yeah, yeah as I said, the side, there's going to be people right? who are going to so complain about this. So there's yeah, always going to be a split. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate yeah, it, especially with such a significant change. Down there as well. so just come up with your own. I come up with your own opinions, guys. Like, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to someone in chat. You don't have to listen to the doom and gloom of everyone else. We have an overtime here. I can imagine the comms are. Everybody's starting to get pretty sweaty now. <laughs> uh, we, we, we get towards the end of the map. Uh, so, Thinking for myself, really like, <laughs> I did not I agree to this. For you guys, probably, uh, this, this is probably awesome to see, like, the game actually being... It's one thing, I think, to play, but now to, like, observe and be able to watch. And obviously, you know, the people you guys work with every day. The map looks great. Awesome. That is something that I think we should probably all agree on. The map yeah, looks awesome. Yeah, We've been playing it in this state for a long time, too, and it's always... It's always so tough to um, to play a game a certain way at work and then go home and it it operates in a totally different way and you're <laughs> yeah. playing with people online and you can't help but think like if only you knew <laughs> right. what I was playing you know every, every right. looks like an Overwatch reskin um, I'm not impressed wait what do you mean so of course it's, it's going to be an Overwatch reskin really it's Overwatch two to, to have that out in front of in front of our community so they can kind of see what we've been doing yeah. actually a ton uh, of like small changes in here too like I'm curious if people picked up on it after one game um like one example of a small change that uh actually we may end up removing but it's in this build right now is um, wobble, wobble, motherfucker. we've had it for a while now but we just had a discussion damn it quit thank you for the prime sub uh, we've actually slowed the movement acceleration rate of everybody in the game just very someone slightly. caught that on uh, reinhardt somebody that caught that right like someone create, said that reinhardt um, pin and movement felt more, weird uh, sort of prediction element to shooting an enemy as opposed to interesting kind of you know, ADA, D spam a lot of times, or just like turn directions so fast that it was really hard to lead a shot or, you know. Interesting. Sometimes I don't know how I feel about this. Guessing a little bit on a high, which direction. I think it's a good go. game change as we well, yeah. To, like, I, I would love to feel it and see if it feel, feel clunky as, as a player. Person, but um, 
it's gonna that is a big change. That is a big uh, gameplay change. As while. he said, I mean, they're not 100 percent sure they're gonna keep it in. Last week or earlier this week, we, we started bringing up a thread again. Like, do we want to keep this? Actually, this has been around for a while. Is everyone still happy with this? So that's just this an is example. Very of, like, the controversial. Core... Like, uh, no, he said they just changed it. No, they said that it's been in the game for a long time, and they're not sure if they want to keep it. That's what he said. But I think what it, whether or not we keep a change like that in the game, I think what it speaks to is the. The amount of systems and how deep we're looking at like the entire right. experience of pvp in the game yeah seems like no uh no stone on pvp is being left like uh, i feel like know, hanzo widow and right? no i, I disagree with electro under kind of every rock you know see see what you i almost think do. with less tanks uh, I bring it's gonna from the employ faster uh, gameplay real quick i can uh welcome in stylosa uh dude what do you think uh, uh first looks what do you have what do you think man uh, I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical when I first uh, heard about 5v5. Um, yeah. You know, rip to the off tanks kind of thing. Silosa? But, um, I don't know. Based off watching that uh, first map there on New York, I don't know. It looks quite spicy, this does. Could be quite good. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I, I'm really excited. Like, as somebody who, uh, I, I will wait in the DPS queue, uh, you know, as, as, as long as I got to wait, you know. And But now, like, seeing the tanks and seeing how aggressive you can play and know push the pace uh i'm i'm excited uh to to be able to kind of now d dive into the tank role and also when i'm support you know uh to throw a few heals on my tank and then start pumping out some damage you know yeah i mean well super buff tanks you're just gonna go in right this is uh yeah it's always been That's the dumb thing when well when you're playing reinhardt right you don't want to charge in most of the time but now it's like yeah just go in <laughs> yeah <laughs> now, now, now yeah now now i'm uh i'm going full throttle i'm charging back in we can bring uh we can bring uh aaron and jeff back in uh, as our our next map is going to be a game mode that we saw at BlizzCon line, uh, BlizzCon in 2018. It seems like uh, forever ago. Is so, Jen? push. Uh, how has the game mode changed since we last saw it? Um, th uh, streaming we on Twitch, we're back. A lot of changes to the mode yeah. itself, at least as far as like the push was fun. Rules go for push it. was fun. But I played it at BlizzCon. It was very fun. It, I really so like the we, idea of it. We have more than one push map um, in development, and I think we have more than one that we'll even be looking at today. Um, so we're really committed to the mode, um, and we have a lot of fun playing this thing. Um, I think the so the interesting thing about push to me is it. Um, from the outside, it sort of looks like it's a rip. So they make it 5v5, yes. Um, but there's something about having the, the this robot move back and forth in the map that makes this very special. I almost think of push um, more as a moving control point. So is push going to be in comp? Yeah, push a, will be theoretically replacing 2CP. More than a, a, a match of payload. Um, and you'll kind of see it. The... The, the mode can be really flanky. Um, so there's a lot of other heroes in here that I think can get play in Very push. flanky. And a lot of that has to do with just the, the bi-directional nature of that robot in the map and also because of how quickly it moves. Yeah, now, if you've never seen push before, uh, there's a robot. Yeah, I'm surprised the middle, that they didn't give 5v5 5 to some... Once you get control, you can start pushing your... I hope that they give 5v5 the to some good players at some point soon. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see, like, it. almost yeah, like an uh, our team, gonna, right? I think it would be an enormous thing for them if they gave 5v5 to, like, two our teams. Just like, hey, here's the, here's the build. Play 5v5 for a little bit. We're going to record it. We're going to cut it together and then we'll go from there, right? Like, I think that'd be really interesting because I think then you would get a sense for what is happening or something like that, right? Random people. It was a massacre. I'll be honest, I was just AFK. Because, like, those those two teams that were playing, is like you don't really get a good sense because they, they just weren't that good, right? They're, they're obviously varying sense of skill. Obviously, we are the high end of Overwatch and we want to see the highest level and how it's going to feel, but yeah. In 5v5, because the last time we saw push at BlizzCon, the, the PvP was six on six. Does it play any different, you guys feel, especially on Toronto? A little bit. Um, so push has always been maybe our most hectic mode. Oh, yeah. or our, Give me that I'm the high end of Overwatch. Game mode. Um, and it, part of the reason for that is the way these maps are designed is we have a very um, sort of like wavy path that the, the robot travels on. So the objective is kind of always moving back and forth. And then we have a lot of very direct routes across the map that the players can take. And because of that, it, it allows players to take a lot of shortcuts, circle around the enemy team, um, and it creates a lot of these flanking opportunities. Um, with five players, there's just one less person you kind of have to 
kind of keep in the in in your mind's focus and, and Twitter is already a hellscape zero out of ten would not recommend ah people are always gonna be doom and gloom people uh, hate so change it's settled down a little bit I still think it has that dynamic dynamic nature that we've always loved about push it's just a little bit easier to to kind of understand fast paced I think that's uh yes. that's kind of the way I would put it like you have uh a lot of the buildings you can go through different I'm practically at our level my off take. tank holds me back uh, but now 5v5 I can Let's finally ascend my two. time to this shine will be, uh, Toronto this will be push. Toronto uh, this is the map that we actually saw uh back at BlizzCon. I played this at BlizzCon it's a really cool map play. uh it was awesome I assume then. we'll see a new hero here they probably like don't want to throw it all at you at once right gonna get like an overhead view of the map now and see you know, your your tracers your genjis on this type of map reaper is the one to watch for i think uh, <laughs> it, re map. has reaper been tearing it up <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> really so is. is this map the same as it was back at blizzcon um or has there been any alterations to it um it's it's which at massa we seen we've only same, seen new york um, and now yeah. we're seeing toronto we, when we had the map at blizzcon it's um it was definitely a work in progress and it's like the changes i like the changes now but We've had the I think that I think 5v5 sure. is very good. Obviously, it sucks for. I think the biggest complaint right now is everyone's like the poor off tank players. But I don't know. My whole thinking is we're going to Overwatch 2. We're going to a whole new fucking game. If they think 5v5 is going to make Overwatch better, I'm down for it. I was massively concerned with Overwatch 1 going to Overwatch 2 and then just being like copy paste, add a bunch of new heroes, add a bunch of new maps. Overwatch 2, baby. And I would have been really upset because I, I I think we can all agree Overwatch is not a perfect competitive game. It is not a good eSport. It has so many flaws. It has so many holes. Too much CC, too many shields, a lot of unfun aspects. By going to 5v5, you open this window in which people, they can this solve better these better not harm Hanbin. Uh, like about assault Hanbin, Hanbin, like there are still going to be tanks like remember now all of a sudden people are just saying rip off tanks i think it's more likely that main tanks are in trouble this you definitely get a winner off tanks are i think off tanks are fine i think off tanks can learn main tanks to a reasonable degree you know what's hard to learn having main tanks you don't know how to aim playing sigma and zaya that's hard like if they're all of a sudden being required to play these aim intensive tanks as well instead of just like i've seen some main tank aims they fucking suck as a mercy player i can say that right so it's like i don't think it's just one side is is fucked i think they're all gonna need to learn how to play all the tanks um we have more of that so where the game mode is actually is actually helping to control the length of the match um and and the, the pace of the match but then you just have DPS on off tanks. You, you see no, because is, uh, no, no, no. You're not gonna have DPS uh, just switch to off tanks because then, like, right for the most part, so I don't think you're gonna see that. You're gonna have tank players as tank players. Definitely you're not gonna see as much thing. So we got this, no uh, new heroes. Uh, poor Lumpy. Sag gets taken out right off, <laughs> right, right, right off the rip. Lumpy was going on one of those flanks. Didn't turn out. Uh, didn't turn out so well. So, so the, does the uh, the bot unlock right away? Um, it takes about thirty. Because boy, me, I know. I'm sorry. I love you. Is we don't want a team to think that there's a certain amount of of pressure or to have all this pressure to get to it. Toronto is very pretty. Possible. Yeah, I do like the I do like the map. Strategic with the way that you. Um, is the M two seconds? We don't know. We don't know. We're 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 observing changes as they the happen. Control works. How come you're not the host of this? Because Matt does a, be a better so job than me. The, That's not a good job. Robot. He's got a name, right? Yeah, his name is T W O. That's good. It's, uh, we, we see uh, some, some Genji play in action. Is yeah, you see like all the buildings you can kind of come from. Players, uh, you know, Hacked. above to the Sombra side. still exists. <laughs> Overwatch two is dead. See that like you know fast paced. It it, it looks uh you know, way more like you can as a DPS player just kind of go off to the side, make a play, try and make a. You see oh, that was a good dash. Right oh, yep. deadly kid yeah, coming alive. It, it, still oh no. In push. Yeah. And, it's really important. Still a lamp F. All our, <laughs> in, in all of our map types. Um, but there are a lot of ways to get around that and to get through it. And that's what creates a lot of these opportunities. Wait, the new nade? Did they change nade? Remake kill. Can't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, no, I'm yeah, watching yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm fixated on the gameplay. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, this looks... This looks oh, really good beat. The beat looks different. Like, the the uh, like overshields are green. Know, going in there, a... A good old brawl and then obviously the as the mech or the the point is moving through the map it's changing up <laughs> he's dead yeah it, to be honest it looks fairly similar to what i played back at blizzcon all those years ago 
just with yeah, one I less think... tank. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just, it's just, yeah. yeah, but it's just more space, I think, to operate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I, I'm... These I'm fights seem like they're going forever, and I don't know if that is because yeah, of like, changes that have happened, that or if these guys are just awful around, at killing each other. I'll be able to kind of, like, play Tracer and go off to the side, and they can play. I noticed, too, the, uh, the green health over Lucio here. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is that on the know. UI now? <laughs> Bit of both. <laughs> it's more the latter, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's the, I like, the players yeah, as well. Because it feels like they're shooting each other this whole time. Like, if, <laughs> if we had uh, fucking, like, we're, we're decay in this game, yeah, everyone would be dead. Progress. It's possible to change, although we're pretty happy with it right now. Um, this is a change to... Uh, what we kind of call overhealth. I, I, I am bronze, this looks like my game, yeah. Overwatch 1, you can have over armor and over shields depending on who's giving it to you much like you can have normal health and shields and armor um EMP so, hit it you know, oh there you go getting into trying to create clarity and make sure you know, the game's very readable in all these senses it, you know like you mentioned with the Zenos, oh pun so intended like, throwing away the bait um, come on that came up too is like you know it's possible to get especially there isn't like the same side like, of positional advantages yeah the game is the the, the map is always free flowing and dynamic like, right you know, health, better and EMPs armor, and, and lit. Armor and shields. You could literally true, have six, seven harsh but true. Health. And it was like I can't even understand what I'm looking at right now. But it's like, like so I, I really insane. like the idea of this map, so, right? Where like so you gotta push, um, and the the team, the team, the team fight of the the dynamics uh, of the team fight change instantly, right? One team doesn't have an enormous concept defensive concept advantage because of a positioning for the most part, right? It's always gonna be going back and forth, and I think that's something that Overwatch, for such a fast-paced game like Overwatch, is really missing. Is it feels like you're playing like Numbani first point where the defensive team just has an enormous advantage because they have high grounds you know so now yeah. we kind of have all like massive chokes health, and it's very understandable that you know you see somebody with green and you can see like okay that's not you know that's over healthy it's either gonna drain or if I shoot through it it can't be healed and stuff like that so um it kind of helps uh clarify all that if port two is gonna work out going back and forth but uh uh, I noticed before there was like a circle. So is there like kind of uh, capture points, like progress? Does that change the respawns at all? How does that work on push? Yeah, it does. So the robot starts in the middle of the map and it pushes those um, like the, those red barricades in front of it. Um, and you can use those to kind of like in world see what your high watermark is. And if, if the robot's able to push it to the checkpoint, um, it will unlock a forward spawn room for the, the team that was Interesting, able to do it. Yeah. see it just off to the left. Are they not going to get pros to play here? No. Um, so if the attacking team can... Uh, not as far as I was aware. I knew it was just going to be a look. It, it's not really as much about the gameplay. I think that needs to be the next the step. That's the important next step is they need to show... This is the announcement. This is them just sort of explaining a lot of the systems. The next step needs to be them getting pros in and it's showing how it feels in like a higher level gameplay, right? Yep, there is an additional detail there. It's... TWO has to be pushed back to the middle of the map before you lose oh, your forward okay. spawn room. Oh. And we actually started it the way... Um, I'm getting bored watching this gameplay. Well, you know, so we're really here for the gameplay. You're really here for the explanations of how, they're, how the game has changed, right? And it got, like, really <laughs> chaotic, and you'd have no idea where you were going to spawn. So we, we kind of gave you a great... Instead of doing a developer there, update, where kind of like how it was like Jeff, um, where he's by, just, like, explaining things that are going to happen... I think they just wanted yeah, to put some call, form of gameplay that just sort of gave you an idea, but they didn't want yeah, the gameplay to like dominate the idea second, of what we're watching, right? Then, like, they want the, the, the aspects of what they're explaining. Oh, away. nice yep. grab. And I, I mean, that happens in Overwatch, you know, um, but it was just, it was way too blatant. This with double that. bubble Zarya is sick. <laughs> 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 yeah. She's incredible. I love what? her. It's actually a pretty recent thing we put, checked it in, but it's pretty new. Is her damage ramp though when she's charged? What? Stylosa? You have before, but yeah, yeah. They're both using shared charges, so yeah. Hello, are you good? <laughs> Stylosa, we're good, right? <laughs> Wait, Zaya does more damage when she has charge. <laughs> I think he meant. I think he meant. Does she do more damage when she's charged now? But even a lot of playtests, I can find myself like. You know, sending a message to people. Well, what was your average energy? Would you say? Or how was it? Like this, you were kind of turning it up. That seems a little insane. So, I hate the new awesome. UI. I actually don't mind the new so UI. Fun, I man. didn't like it as much I when I first played at BlizzCon, but it, it's it's growing like, on me. Uh, I also can imagine the people that I would play with on Zarya would just automatically double bubble themselves and right. everybody <laughs> else. Think, actually, for themselves. Like, okay, yeah. Let's just run in and double bubble ourselves. But then you start to think like, actually, if I save two and you know Genji pulls out his blade on my team, 
I think if I double <laughs> shield him and we, you know, I save that up, uh, that's going to oh, be yeah, kind of ridiculous. Of, so. oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Like, uh, yeah, not just applying the two bubbles to yourself, but you could, because they share the charge, you could theoretically, like, bubble again G-Blade and then bubble him again, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, God, Farah. Really well. so, so many, is... uh, so many different ways. Like... Yeah, so this is like, as I just, just kind of recently put in, um, coming off the back. Where of, are the uh, bubbles? Um, we're about pretty stuff. fast. I think it, it scales with like people like uh, the cart does, right? It's been pretty interesting. I, I, I'm certainly concerned about it in some cases, but it, it also leads to some really awesome plays. So I'm kind of letting it rock for a while and see, what get, see how it feels. Is there potential for push to end progress, just like stupidly but, yeah, fast? I, I like the progress on that one. Like, is there multiple <laughs> rounds or is it just like, so, if you get uh, it to the OT, end, do you just win? How does the rule here work? I guess they, they have to push all the way to the end or do they just have to be- oh, Okay, Matt's answering the, the question. Time of the blue team. They just need to beat the time of the blue team. So the, the win condition for push is whoever has pushed it the furthest by the end of time wins, or if you happen, or if you're able to push it all the way to the end of the map, you'll win instantly. Okay. So now they're unlocking their forward spawn room right here. Oh, the, the, the tragedy strikes for the blue team. <laughs> Yeah, they need to stay near the robot. So this, yeah, so this is overtime, right? So this is the overtime. So as soon as blue, if the blue team can ever push off the red team from the point, then they just win. But if the red team pushes it to the next, to the to the box of uh the box of victory, which is symmetrical to where the blue team has pushed it, they win, right? So. I, am I the only person that loves that Winston's like right click thing is the same thing as scatter arrow? I mean, just it's, it's definitely there. hectic there towards the end. This is this is going to be quite good for Overwatch League, I'd imagine. This is... Uh, mm, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed watching that. Yeah, I think... Uh, Stylus, I think to your point, like... Uh, yeah, when you think about... Like, yes, the game is confirmed to be 5v5. You're like, oh, well... Like, does it still have... We that, want like, Scatter like, Arrow. Like, yeah, give Winston Scatter Arrow. That, 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 like, that's of, all we needed. You see it there, I think, especially on push. I think it's why it's such like... A does, I don't know what his right click does the game uh is that yeah you still have these fast-paced fights you know you're you're able to you know make plays all over the map it I, sort of ramps up right as the match goes on it yeah. gets more and more and more intense and woof, you have a big sort of crescendo towards the end that's really nice can I'm you turn really up the stream nice. yes yeah, it's got that overwatch music where yeah, it kind of yeah. adds to the, <laughs> the suspense of it all yeah and push this happens in push a lot it goes to overtime it'd be the worst um, cps now 5v5 more often <laughs> no idea it doesn't. and it was a decision uh, that we made when we yeah, were developing no idea. the mode um where we had to decide what was more important can you push, push it end in like 30 seconds yeah to get the I, i'm curious on how fast you can get it to the end right or is it more important for the robot to be moving back and forth in the map um because it's it's really hard to get both of those and so we think that this this mode plays better to have it moving back in a certain way push feels like escort so but it feels like a more the, dynamic the version of it mechanics and the escort, map design you know? is all kind of because it's always going back that. and forth and it get, and it makes it like really really exciting yeah it's just the the fast moving fast flow of it kind of screws over right? oath tank players think, i'll uh, talk about that more once this is over or we get a break house, but right? yeah like for you're just hero design and being able to kind of come up with these. Feels like five CP from tier two, yeah, you know, and I like that. I mean, right? you saw Zarya there on push, like it's not a hero <laughs> that you would kind of think for like a, an aggressive type of game mode like that. But she was like, she looked unkillable all the time, and she looked yeah. crazy. She's really scary in this form for sure, and you know I think that's kind of what we're thinking for a lot of these, uh, you know, sort of off tanky kind of characters before, you know, Roadhog and. And Diva, we saw Diva. There Maybe off tank well, players should adjust. Honestly, too, that is so kind of my. I think it's worth noting that my not, take like, on it, but yeah, we'll, we'll, just we'll talk about it after. Super aggro. In some cases, we're pushing some of the more aggro tanks and making them a little tankier. So, I mean, a lot of cases they have a lot more health as people notice. But like people um, are like, has think of the off tanks in the Overwatch League and, and contenders, and, and people have ground so grinded the game. We didn't just like. You guys realize you are talking about point zero 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 one percent of the player base, right? When you're talking about that it screws over these players like they're trying to make a better game they're not trying to make everybody happy about everything someone's always going to get fucked over with any decision that you ever make and like i think yeah no as much as i also feel bad for some of the tank players that their role is being taken away at the end of the day like i can understand why this decision is being made um and it yeah it definitely looks better 5v5 
like yeah i don't know that that that's i, I want to see more i want to see more of it so, like, you know, I, well, I a lot like of our players are angry molding on twitter game. yeah exactly right of course they are <laughs> yeah, yeah stay like, stay like, is not gonna leave the car he's just gonna yeah, he's no, just gonna, gonna, gonna no, 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 plant, no. His, plant his stake down and just hang out but uh guys we're gonna go for a quick break don't go anywhere when we come back super's gonna join the show give his thoughts on some of the things super. he's seen go over some of the stuff that's going on with the tanks you don't want to miss it stay tuned all right we got a break um yeah and i think i think that's that's the issue is i think the game needs to adapt the game needs to build it's not like they're just like making this change willy-nilly because you know fuck it i actually think this is it the more i see it and the more i think about it the more i think it's probably a great change because it's not only the fact that oh yeah we get to change this i think it allows it solves a lot of problems like how do you guys want to solve the problem that nobody wants to play tank like, nobody wants to play tank right now. And the only way they can get people to play tank is if they make them overpowered. But then they make tanks overpowered and everyone, all the DPS players complain on Twitter that tanks are overpowered and I can't play my game. Jane's saying the changes to save our team's money. <laughs> the our teams don't give a shit and also the Overwatch devs don't give a shit about Overwatch League team overness. Let's be realistic. So, as I said, we, there, well, there's still more to come. We're only 50 minutes into this two-hour live stream. I think the 5v5 change is the most, obviously the most important thing we've seen so far. Pros are such a small group. And I think that is where, like, and that's sort of what I said earlier when I was like, we are in the very tiny niche of this game which plays it at the highest, highest level. And we care about, you know, such as like, we care about ourselves. But at the end of the day, like they're making this game for everybody and they're building this game for everybody. And 6v6 in gold games is chaotic. And it is just so much shit going on, right? Like we saw how chaotic this 5v5 was in this push mode. Imagine if you add another player, right? I think it, 6v6 also adds to the element of snowball. So much snowball exists in the game. I think there's more ultimates that have to be dealt with. As much as people say this takes away strategy from the 6v6, I think it also adds more strategy because decisions well, are more meaningful. Mitch Leslie, and already we've seen a ton of what is in the works for Overwatch 2 PvP. There's a lot to take in, obviously with new maps, new game types, and changes, of course, to some of the core mechanics of the game. So we're going to rehash a couple of things, of course, over the next few maps, but we want to drill down on a couple of the things we've already talked about so far. And to help me do that now, we'll be joining our Overwatch League superstar matthew super delici of course is uh everybody's favorite neighborhood main tank how you doing super obviously uh big news today i'd love to get some of your initial thoughts on it yeah uh, thanks for having me first of all um i mean the tank changes that's definitely the one that you know kind of stuck out to me uh the fact that you know only one tank is i'm a tank player and uh, you know my experience with tank you know it goes up it goes down mm -hmm. sometimes you get bullied uh as as a tank with two um, so I'm, you know, I'm curious to see how that's going to progress and change to make it so that it's a lot easier for one tank to be, uh, you know, work properly. And, and this not guy's going to be struggles. out of a job. What do you mean? Yeah, Super's I mean, going to retire, going to streaming. Any sort of tank player stream. Fucking make right now, make millions. What I watch too really is some of the downs here. Obviously, we saw, you know, maybe some more power being shifted in the direction of the tanks, right? And we saw Reinhardt with the double fire strikes. He's got some more of that charge control and the Winston changes. What was your thoughts uh, when you first saw the fact that Winston now has a bit of longer range uh <laughs> equipment to bring to the fight yeah i thought that was uh a little bit interesting i also like that they grabbed the zarya from the experimental um i mean at least in my ch when i played the experimental i thought that the cool now needed to be shorter on that um but i, I like that in general they're trying to give more power if it's going to be just one tank uh because i feel like otherwise a lot of tanks like you know zarya and diva uh they would kind of i know links right now Fipa. they're the way they're designed right now i feel like they Super's also really, weirdly flexible um, for a main tank. He's a very talented player. Need to be played solo, if that makes Yo, sense. Yo, that's um, kind of cool. But now I feel like if they if they do the proper changes, then I think it could actually be pretty good. Uh, absolutely. And you saw there as well a couple of the changes we mentioned. I'm in the way of what? Maze we haven't really talked about, and it's definitely part of a 
a wider conversation that we can sort of tap into uh, in a moment. And of course, uh, we'll be rejoined in, in just a moment by some members of our development team as well to maybe add some context and field some more. Wait, of, what just happened? Questions Did here. I miss we something? We already heard a little bit about that. Was uh, the Diva Winston and, uh, zapping? Sort of that was his alternate fire. So I want to take this opportunity to bring back in Jeff Goodman, of course, the lead hero designer on Overwatch. Two. May slows or freezes? Oh, did they talk about that? Art director, guys, thank you so I much. I didn't see that. Oh, shit, I looked away at the last thing. May change no more freeze. Okay, sorry, I missed that. <laughs> and, uh, super, of course, the chance Camera block the description of text. Thoughts, oh. but gentlemen, sorry, I moved overall, it, the, it definitely uh... feels like the role of the tank changes vastly now in this in this landscape. Not only is it just one tank, but maybe some of the roles or things you're expected to do in the game may have shifted. Yeah, I think absolutely. I, I mean, it's sort of like. It, you know, definitely in the past, it's so moves slow, well, but don't like freeze, and that's a good change. Your team, but I think now, I think no one, I don't think anybody likes Maze freeze, and, and really I like May is a prime example of a hero that's going to be changed exactly for Overwatch too. I think go. everybody, um, which you know, some, so I think she's not going to go in the same iteration. Um, internally, we've had people like kind of worried about that pressure a little bit, like, oh man, that's a lot of like, I have a lot of responsibility now. But I think as you start to play it, and you just realize that. Wow, I actually have a lot more tools to do this than before, though. I mean, I'm, I'm a lot stronger. I can actually survive these encounters a lot more, especially with healers both focusing on me now and everything. So um, it ends up just kind of being empowering and super fun when you get in there, um, especially obviously with the ability to cancel Reinhardt Charge and stuff, so you don't have to overcommit. And uh, you can poke a little bit with Winston, so you don't have to overcommit with him either. And so a lot more control. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, earlier I mentioned I used to be a Brian main as well. Nice. And these changes. Yeah. So, <laughs> what map was that? That was New York. It took a while to get used to the changes, but it, it, I agree with what Jeff said. There's a lot more choice. And Did I see two CP? I'm not sure what that was actually. Wait, now. actually, what map was that? that I thought I thought it was New York, but it actually isn't New York, right? Team. Maybe that's well, Rome. You sort of mentioned uh, Reinhardt here as well because I, I don't know. If they said Rome was a thing, right? A great depth so far, but because the role of the tank maybe changes or maybe it becomes more. I don't like that they're showing PVE shit. Um, you know, Reinhardt oh, was known him to have a, a sort oh, of no, that one was rare, yeah. on live where he's less affected by some of this crowd control or knockback stuff. Oh, yeah. I want to talk a bit about roll passives because that's something roll that passives. is- Roll passives, here we go. Uh, you Let's know, break it down. coming to Overwatch 2 and really sort of set some of these roles apart from each other a bit more, Jeff. Yeah, so this is um, a new thing coming to Overwatch 2. It's, um, for those that don't know, it's every role, so tanks, DPS, and support, get a passive or a set of passives related to their role. Um, so in this case, you can see uh, tanks have a couple things uh, associated with them. One what are they showing me right here? Reduced, they get knockback uh, reduction on them, so you can't knock them around quite so easily, which thematically makes sense too. But if you're a tank player, you playing against, you know, Lucio and- So there's you know, the passive heal. can be really infuriating sometimes, just be flying around all the time, not being able to control your character as well. Um, so that's uh, one of the things they get. And the other thing Holy they get- Holy fuck, Genji's a tanks, speed racer. Like Roadhog who don't have a- barrier is people feel like they generate too much ultimate for the enemy team especially if you're trying to be aggressive which is what we're trying to incentivize that you know come in you do maybe you cancel charge and try to get hammer swings in there to build your ult but like did you was that a worthwhile trade-off if the enemy shot you so much that they built more yeah. ult than you so did? boop so resistance what we've done is shooting less ult charge time less ult for you so your enemies get less ult for shooting you across the board for all tanks lucio gets so much uh, worse against tanks and these are obviously but the I guess against tank tuning, but you can kind of see it here a little bit um you know, depending on who you shoot, you can generate a lot less ult. So you, oh, so I was getting, lo you get less ult charge. Interesting. guest players, uh, the role passive they get right now, and this is something we're definitely iterating on a tuning, maybe more. It's like half the ult, yeah. They get a movement speed bonus just across the board, which you can see here. Um, you can see it's not like massive. It's not like everyone's going to be soldier That's pretty quick though. Um, <laughs> he says that's not so massive. Hard, that's like, pretty big deal. Yeah, I mean, you can't run anymore. Too, like, any kind of movement speed changes to anything is huge. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a big change. Sort of, I don't know like, if I like that you know, DPS passive. Mandatory for so long because he was the only one bringing move speed. Like, granted, he's a lot more move speed. But, um, so you know, we started a little higher. We were tuning it back a little bit. We're trying to find the number here. But um, it's really interesting in what it allows you to do as far as even just like basic map traversals, you can just flank a lot easier. And let me never play support again, but you do have like passive heals as support. Uh, but also like there are times where, let's say you're like Reaper or something uh, and you commit- Which is nice. To, to get at an enemy Zenyatta or something. And he's trying to run around a corner, just get away from you. And you know, you can just catch him. You, I mean, give it enough, a little bit of time, you'll just get, get up close to him. And, oh, that's what I want to hear as a support. Gap, so, the DPS player's uh, like, you'll just catch him, powerful, don't worry about uh, it. Even though it's kind of a little subtle there. Um, and then the, the, the Support changes is this is probably something that 
Ana mains, especially you're gonna love to hear. But the yeah, support players this is the worst thing about playing Ana. Automatic health regen after a certain amount of time of not taking damage, which is basically Mercy's passive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's Mercy's passive, but a, a lot less of a degree, and Mercy's passive will still exist as like a much stronger right. version. Um, but this is still there, so you know, it, you know, I always feel like you're an auto player. You know, obviously when you're really low, you're like, I guess I'll nade myself. But sometimes you're missing like 50 health, and you're like, eh. Am I gonna waste my nade just to heal myself? Where's my other healer? Usually like, the other the healers back, are in like... front of you as well, so <laughs> I don't have to turn around right, to see right. you. Exactly. So um, that's been really awesome, especially for us um, designing new heroes, because I feel like we're in this position. We love we lower skill ceilings. Healer. What makes like, all okay, of this well, lower skill ceiling? Come up with some mechanic that they can heal themselves, because it's like ridiculous that you can't like, you know, shoot yourself in the foot or whatever is always on it. Yeah, they said Mercy's passive um, will be stronger. So now, now they have these sort of like, you don't have to worry about that anymore unless we wanted to add something like in Mercy's case or bait, in yeah. case for shields. Shields regenerate on top of this so you'll actually That's get bait. double regen uh, if, you're, if your shields are regening. So th those heroes still retain their sort of extra regeneration bonuses but a lot nicer for Ana. Mercy definitely yeah, being better. This is no, th that, that those that, support that, passives is not, Super Mercy's the one least kind of, affected kind of by it. Past us here, some, uh, some footage of May. So, um, oh, yeah. Anna is May, by far the most like been uh, value, who gets uh, the most value out of that right. passive change. So this is actually the kind of the tip of the iceberg and some changes I can oh, talk about, but did. May was the, the first one we sort of checked into the build and we wanted to play with for a long time. Did they so, change her model? You know, so she doesn't actually fully freeze the enemy here at all. She still slows them, but Thank she doesn't God. never... Never <laughs> the way. God. The compensation, of course, is does a lot more damage, so it's... You know, it's really scary to be getting hit by her because you're taking damage and you're slowed. But of course, you, there's a lot of ways to escape. You can have help and everything. Um, but you never actually get in that lockdown state. You're like, okay, well, here's the free head. Would you mind enabling that, subtitles? Um, I, I'm not on YouTube, her, but also the YouTube subtitles are usually kind of right now. Sorry. She still has that sort of cleave. I, my, the YouTube was lagging pretty heavily for me. So and you're doing so much damage now. If you, can, it's Sorry. kind of fun to play this game and try to get all this extra damage because you could straight up just kill people now mm. by piercing through a tank or. You know, certainly if Zarya is ulting or something like that, you can just pierce through everybody and just kill them yourself. And deals, so it does um, more damage. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, still has an interesting back and forth with her secondary Bo, as well. Please stop. But Ooh. as I mentioned, it's kind of the tip of the iceberg because um, what we're really playing around with, and this isn't actually in this build, this is something we're, we've been experimenting May is a with, tank. Uh, hasn't quite been successful enough to quite put it in the build right. yet, but this is something we're looking at, is just generally looking at crowd control across the whole game. Yo. Where we want it to be, who should have it, um because we certainly are we've got feedback over time we totally understand and respect like sometimes you're playing against you know the ultimate cc team with like may and, <laughs> i don't know mccree yeah. and whatever and especially as a tank i'm sure you're well aware yeah. of this and you're just like oh my god i hate my life um so yeah. we <laughs> we were experimenting with um like just generally setting guidelines like okay Tanks should probably have CC. They're all about space control. Yeah. And, you know, they have that role to be able to earth shatter or yeah. you know, create, create that um, those great opportunities. But should as many DPS heroes have CC as May? Maybe McCree doesn't need to stun. Oh. You know? and, and so we're looking at all of, all of these. Be careful about the, taking away. Actually, really, the DPS and the supports. Um, currently, like, again, this is all, like, really hot off the presses because it's not even in this okay. build. But um, we're, we're probably thinking that, like, Ana's pretty cool right now P people are generally pretty cool with her sleep um there's a skill shot element you involved give me one there's more sleep, a lot of <laughs> <laughs> just keep going i want like a you fan of sleep stand, cards, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're giving me cool talent ideas actually yeah um, but uh so like that you know we're still playing that one seems pretty cool but like mccree probably not so cool even though he's sort of like ingrained on mccree as his son that's like what he's about but it's like Okay, well... Flashbang fan, the hammer has become else, more and more of a weird um, situation of, of I don't like the flashbang on McCree. Changes, it's like now we're I think about, it's getting... Okay, yeah. take all the CC away. Tracer, Doomfist, Wrecking Ball. These heroes are just like out of control now, right? Because like they're sort of heavily countered by CC. Yeah, that's so, what you just said. And we got to go back and change those heroes, of course, as well as the compensation for the CC heroes. So that is something that's like heavily in progress. And uh, I'm hopeful that um, I think we'll be able to get some reductions in there. I'm sure, sure. I think... A lot of That's our fans good. Would like to like see that it. they're talking about um, removing so CC kind of, and then you know, how that adjustments has to affect everyone, right? Because, like, as you said, you take you know, away CC, sure Tracer just it, runs it, runs, it runs around and murders like everyone. If, um, you know, we, we were at points Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll give McCree something if they take away Flash. They're not just going to take away Flash. The ability usage element, how important is the shooting element? It's not uncommon for, you know, you know, for developers to say this game's all, you know, it's about the gunplay, but as the game evolves and you have these ideas and you bring these new abilities in, that it can sort of change that. 
Super. Um, usually, mate, it's hard to get you to uh, stop talking, but uh, you've had a moment to absorb <laughs> some of this. Let's uh, let, let's talk about how you think the role of the main tank or tank in this regard is, is going to change in maybe an Overwatch 2 and, and sort of some of your thoughts about where the CC is going. How's it going to feel? You know, you have a rock hard mental, dude. Like uh, the way you, you sit on that stream and you just go, go, go. But tell us how you think this sort of changes. Yeah, uh, so that was kind of... A big worry of mine was like you say one tank and then i'm thinking current overwatch where you know you're playing against a brig and then an anna and then a mccree mm -hmm. and a may and then you know you're stun locked for 17 seconds and then you want to alt f4 uh. um, but if they're, you know if it is you know looking at the rest of the 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 cc in the game and you're looking to reduce that across the board and then on top of that you're adding more utility to tanks i think that's you know it's going to make it easier to do that um because i i i, I have felt that cc is kind of um it's a little out there sometimes you know it's it's not always the most fun to play against um and especially for me i always felt that displacement cc was almost more egregious than like stuns because like if you get booped by like a lucio and then, like a brig whip shot or a ball that can like swing back and forth i always felt that that was more um like annoying and frustrating to play against because you you couldn't really control that like you kind of just got knocked everywhere and that was just the way it was um are those being like looked at as well as stuns or is it like everything across the board? Well, you have the set yeah, definitely. Pass, but the, tanks, the nice right? thing is we have this new tuning knob of the tank passives to say, you know, if we still oh, want yeah, Lucio true. to be able to boop enemies off cliffs or something and still mm -hmm. leave that strong, but we still, we still think tanks are being booped too much. We can just dial that like knockback reduction up a little bit for the tank. So they, they, you know, they, they're less affected by it. So it's, it's a nice place to be. Absolutely. All right, that's that's nice to hear. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're drilling down pretty heavily into like you know, what it, what it means to be a tank player, and I think talking about it is good. But I, I kind of want to see some more more of it in action. Um, I mean, Dion, we have. I mean, I can see it here in the little preview screen. But our next map is is really incredible, and it really captures, I think, the vivacity and vibrance of a of of a region of the world that's really known for it. Talk us, talk to us through. What is uh, that card? Really I love it. <laughs> Yeah, so real another map we wanted to do for a long time. That card is sick. We have several artists on the team that that spent a part of their life there. I'm gonna so ride that card. I'll, I'll be a Lucio kind of that just sits on that card all fucking day. I'm not leaving. They, Don't they worry about it. Beautifully painted favelas, colorful, vibrant club. You get to visit where Lucio's club is. Um, the team loves going to Brazilian barbecues. So one of the spawn rooms is a Brazilian barbecue yeah. place, you know, oh, it's, no, it's a another map. We're just having a lot of fun creating different details and, and, and this aspirational version of this location for Overwatch 2. And it's a, a, a brand new payload here too. You guys saw earlier, it's a pretty fun carnival float. Yeah. Uh, so we're just having fun with these maps. One cool second. Brazilian barbecue. It's uh, right. fun and sunny and colorful. And I think it's a, a map that feels like Overwatch when you play it, you know? I mean, already that sort of signature vibrance that, you know, so many of uh, you know Overwatch's maps have been credited for is there. Because we watch both of you on YouTube. Uh, obviously, I don't want you to get away too much, too much awesome. the story, but Thanks for hanging is out. Is there a context here? Like, wh where are the attackers starting from? Because I see some beach. I see different landscapes sort of getting fleshed out here as we go through the map. Okay, so the defense actually starts in Lucio's home. So, yeah, obviously there's a story layer to Overwatch that we want to tell, so mm -hmm. Lucio plays a big part of that, so uh, you get a little hint of where we're going with that, but we're not talking too heavily about it. Also, Lucio's club is always, it's kind of a community place, so it's a place... Alright, uh, yo, this real, map looks sick, look at the end of this, this is actually he, nuts. He's a community guy, we wanted to showcase this with this gigantic kind of sci-fi club he has. Wobble wobble, motherfucker. Um, yeah, it's, Yo, another it's connected to the three story of Overwatch. Uh, you, we'll just have to wait and see how closely Rio plays into the game. You saw a little bit at BlizzCon a while ago, but um, there's definitely more. Right, so, this... yeah, so I uh, I do have a question for Jeff. Sorry to cut you off. I was going to say you're going to make it. I, I don't have any control over fine. the question, so sorry. If, I'm pretty sure like way back in the day, there was like an interview that I read that was like, five was too small and seven was too big for, yeah, for the yeah. for the roster limit and then six was perfect but like i'm kind of curious like where along wobble, 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 like, the wobble, good question super Thank you very much for the like, fresh was up. it roll lock was it like people sure. learning how to play the game better <laughs> like you, you know what <laughs> i mean pretty much every, all of this yeah i mean it's i mean we know so much about the game i mean it's kind of aaron touched on at the beginning like 
before everything, and you could just play five wins. In fact, we had an internal tournament where that was yeah. the yeah. strategy. <laughs> five wins in a Zenyatta. It was sort of like, oh my god, this seems like maybe a problem, or is this cool? We don't know. Uh, so, like, obviously, when you're building really any game, you try to make the best judgments for what you have and what you're playing, but once you have the game in the wild, you get in everybody else's hands, and it marinates for oh, a while, no. and you're making changes, like, your opinion on this stuff definitely changes. So Yo, Mercy, no, heal! <laughs> Um, like it was touched on, we, we were still keeping an open mind to maybe doing some of these kind of changes, and then coming Overwatch 2, we were just like, let's revisit everything, and that was definitely one of the major core decisions of Overwatch 1, we were really looking forward to revisiting, and at that point we were just like, yeah, maybe this is actually just much better, maybe we were wrong all along, although, you know, people always say, uh, it's kind of a design thing, people say, you're not necessarily wrong at the time just because you were wrong in retrospect. 5v5 is kind of whack. I think but, uh, people have made yeah. this in uh, this comparison as well, so but people had the exact same note, thought when they went to here, so when they went to uh, uh, like added hero limits, limits, right? When they were like, oh yeah, you can't play five winces anymore. Out. People like, this is literally ruining the game. Uh, yeah, You're so removing so much element this is, I mean, of MOBA diversity and that kind of stuff. And now we look back at it and we're like, that was one of the worst times of Overwatch. I think 5v5 is going to be great for the game looking forward. So looking forward to seeing how that story gets fleshed out. What I'm seeing Same thing with 2 2 2. Like, yeah, 2 2 2. Uh, everyone, like, freaked out right? as if as the worst part, but I think we can all agree 2 2 2 was probably better for the game in terms of just removing this, a lot of the dumb shit that was happening. Buildings and so much high ground I love here. the bird card, it's so like, good. Yeah. The way you play, the map changes drastically here. Yeah, that, that was. Oh, you can go ahead. Oh, that was just one thing. We're, we're trying more of this phased approach with the visuals and the gameplay as we move through the space. So you saw it was a bit more open. As you get the payload, there's a feeling of change in gameplay and art as well. So this visual progression as, as well as gameplay is much more clear in some of the newer maps we're working on. Dude, did you guys see this tweet? Yeah, one thing that I... Dude, maybe Jane's just, so maybe, stupid. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I feel like... A he lot actually of, uh, a lot tweeted this. In, I thought this in, was in just Overwatch an off-the-cuff like, statement. Like, I think, like, he Connor actually believes like, that Overwatch 2 second, went to 5v5 like, and, like, to like save for, like, Overwatch League team's to money? And it can be, like, what do you, you think? Know, a pain to get through those sometimes you feel ZP like really hit it on the head. You're an absolute dumbass who think the primary game design choice for Overwatch 2, a game played by millions and makes Blizzard millions and millions of dollars, is to save Overwatch League team's money. Oh my god, how can you be better for the like, design because I feel like when you, especially on Blizzard first, doesn't like care about Overwatch kind of, esports you know, that much. Real, they really, really don't. It's not fun sometimes so if, mm -hmm. if you're just not clicking or if it's just, you know, they have a, a hard comp that, that yours can't counter. And it's such a bad take. I think it's just better. And it's overall. such a bad thing to say yeah, publicly when he has that many followers because people are just blind. It hasn't like 1100 likes. People are just going to blindly agree and think that's the real reason. They don't have to rely fully on the tank powering through this time but yeah that's that's always the thing we're trying to improve the options of generally think I, if it's not if it can't be a bait be, he didn't it's not a good troll one that will be it, it, or, how is that a good troll you can't just uh we don't know can yet. you not say is that secret no. or? <laughs> i don't know there's don't no know. way uh, okay fair enough so obviously you look you've got you've got one less hero on the battlefield uh your, your maps are dude, dude this more, is so useless uh, against that i guess ball. or just bigger right it's just a large you know, there's so much more ground you could cover if you wanted to take a different approach. Uh, how do you sort of balance how big the map is, right? Because obviously, yo, a sense look at like, that Doomfist, you know, though. It, what it, the fuck? If you go too far in one direction, right, it can seem quite barren. But here, like, this kind of reminds me of like Dorado third detail, point, right? There's so many. Yeah, it reminds yeah, it reminds me of Dorado point. as well. The last um, point of Dorado. So it doesn't feel big, but it, it definitely. Uh, as opposed to maps we saw in, in, in Overwatch in, on live right now, it definitely feels bigger, right? Was that ever a consideration trying to balance that, the sort of size? and Yeah, the, the size does feel big and everything is very open. Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely more detailed than before. And again, the more options, the, there's more passageways and buildings for players to Also move. a bit of junk town, yeah, I see that. Through and With the platform in the middle. Strategies from, but ultimately the maps are in a fairly similar size to the previous you're just seeing a lot more detail out of the overwatch 2 engine we have a lot of cool upgrades that allow us to i do don't think more it's size i think it's the openness of it but yeah it's something we're constantly playing with us at this scale yo the dude the discord all looks kind of cool it's no longer it's it's more like lightning as well as than shadowy wise. This really has like a Dorado feel almost, right? We yeah, even Mitch got it. Payloads that are moving through underneath, and there are yeah. there are multiple levels here. This is not just sort of two levels here. You can, there's even more options, I guess, to sort of make use of this verticality. 
I think it's mm -hmm. this cage and then having this high ground go yeah, off the thing and then a platform ground, in the middle. Right high ground, there's so much going on here. <laughs> yeah. I love this it, point in particular. Like, taking that middle high ground is, you know, really important. If you can hold it, it's fantastic, but it's just really hard to hold because you have all these upper flank routes and under flank routes and stuff, so... Uh, it's, it ends up being like kind of a gambit to try to even take it and hold it. Especially they haven't talked about any new characters yet. No. With barriers all the time. Um, there, we're still so on the 5v5. Right the so, powerful, so we started with 5v5, five explained it. it. They're showing the new maps. They talk about so passes. Is, is is I universal you, you're doing Ultron great, Matt. Keep it up. Or is it just as a result of the tank changes that it seems like people are getting their old slower? It's mostly it was weird. You, you we weren't have, yelling like you were in all caps all the time in my channel. I didn't know how to respond. Probably just a few. Here and there, um, may have gone up or down on their on the cost, but um, it's almost entirely oh, no. just the tank changes. You generate a lot of ult off tanks in our game. Right, I guess there's one less tank to shoot as well, so it makes it right, a true. little bit harder. Although looking at Widow is an interesting example. We haven't adjusted the snipers too much yet, but we're keeping a really close eye on them because a lot of what... Yeah, sort of uh, Widow, everything's going to open up so much more, right, with Widow. Mm -hmm. When you're playing as Widow against a comp that is, you know, like a back in the day when it was like I want a real life bird cut like, that. like you definitely are a lot more powerful so uh, we have to yeah. make sure that they're not they don't get out of control I feel because I feel like on some of these choke points it's definitely a lot more wider than than, than some other maps and I feel like uh, you know if unchecked some certain widows could do a lot of damage yeah yeah so yeah just yet another thing we gotta keep an eye on with the t change like this right I mean you know, we, we talk about how sort of tanks have changed now to sort of allow them to be more multi-purpose or sort of fill a broader spectrum of roles. Obviously, like, you know, when you have a Reinhardt, you, you kind of know what the player is playing for, right? The shield creates space, right? You, you create space just because the shield exists. And with someone like Roadhog, um, they create space because of the threat of the hook, right? It's not even something that's necessarily, mm -hmm. it's implied threat, right? It's not um, exactly. sort of directly displayed. So. I mean, what is the idea for a tank? Because would you say 5v5 means individuals sort of greater sort of responsibility for the success and rank? Yeah, I think... Threat? I think, you know, it, I, as I said, I don't think... I think 6v6 was getting to a point where it added so much chaos that individual accountability... Like, I literally... Like, we've all played Overwatch where you literally hard feed and do nothing and then your team wins, right? I feel like strategy was actually taken a lot out of Overwatch just because of how much was going on and how much chaos there was. I think 5v5 could definitely Certainly pull it back to a better at, level. Uh, and I think, I think that's the conclusion that a lot of people are coming to at this point is 5v5, it sucks for, you know, a lot of players who like to play the off-tank role or the tank role and that kind of stuff because they're essentially, the game is going to have to change and there's frustration around that. And I completely feel that and I feel bad for those people. But I think fundamentally from a gameplay perspective, I think 5v5 will be better for Overwatch in the long term. And I think it would, I think this gives them so much more freedom to do a lot of different things. And the thing you should be taking from this is not that oh my god it's 5v5 everything is going to ruin because this character is going to dominate this character is going to be dominate they have shown and they have talked about so much in this stream just itself of because we are taking out another tank that has given us the freedom to do this now all of a sudden healers don't need to be do as much healing all of a sudden tanks can be stronger which make them more fun oh also we can take cc out of the game because you know we don't feel like we need to have a ton of cc to shut down these tanks that are just always walking at us and that kind of stuff the game will fundamentally change in a better direction and they are willing to change the fundamentals of the game and that's awesome because the game isn't perfect right now the game has a lot of issues with all of those things that i just talked about right super i'm curious to get your opinion here obviously it's someone who plays tank right yeah and i and this is this is also something that i think we talked about earlier that i understand some people aren't gonna like other people are gonna like they are going back in my opinion away from a moba and a strategy game as matt said and going more to you shoot at people your mechanical skill your mechanical shooting is more impactful because the strategy is going to be less just like overwhelm play heavy tanks play heavy shield play heavy cc and just run at the enemy and shooting at them doesn't matter and i like that i like playing fps games that's why i play overwatch and i think it's definitely i like the strategy of overwatch but i think it's definitely as time has gone on since the inception of overwatch it keeps going further and further away from an fps game and more towards a strategy game um, because the supports now, they only have to focus on, on one tank. In particular. And so I understand people who aren't going to like that because they love the MOBA and the strategy the aspect more than they like the FPS aspect. But I think there's a lot like of people who left Overwatch just because it doesn't have a, any a FPS aspect more... in it. Tanks are gonna have to play a lot more what map is this? This is Rio de Janeiro. Assertive. Mm -hmm. 
because they can't really rely on, on why not make it 4v4 with one tank one support that's an enormous change right you know, yeah like i also think 4v4 might like all of a sudden you have to ch if you go to 4v4 you have to change all the maps because all of a sudden the maps are going to feel enormous with only eight people in the game really boils down to their capacity to to deal damage they did 5v5 to delete double shield. Honestly, if you look back at all the biggest issues with any meta in any Overwatch, it usually comes down to the fact that of stacking tanks, right? Goats, uh, double shield. Um, what else is there that's been like stupidly bad and oppressive? And it's like usually goes back to the fact that the ta you have double tanks, right? But, but like, I think Dive is a great meta. So that's like not a, I'm not saying all metas are defined by that. I'm saying a lot of the worst metas, in my opinion, have been built by the fact that it just, it takes a lot of the FPS element out of it. Pirate ship. Mercy meta, yeah, mercy meta. When like I think there was, uh, what was he playing? You were playing like, uh, like pulled pork, Arissa hog with mercy meta. I think that was really bad. Yeah, I mean a lot of it's like we're talking about with just options and like you know, super mentioned like. Are they gonna change any of the old maps? They haven't talked about that. You think tank diff is gonna show up one? I think tank is gonna be way more of an impactful role, which is good for the game. If you only allow one, you can make it strong. And that's gonna make people wanna play tank because one of the other issues that exists in Overwatch is nobody wants to play tank. Everyone loves playing yeah, DPS and support. There are there are people that play tank, but it's a lot less than people who wanna play those, those other roles. Yeah, like you can actually make them tanky, right? You can make them oppressive because you can't stack them. You don't have two of them running around and it makes it feel like the DPS can't do anything. Right? It, I, the best example that I can give that I've played for in the past was Team Fortress 2. I, uh, Demo Man was broken in 6v6 competitive. The way they balanced it was, well, your team can only have one. You can only have one of the overpowered thing. That's what this feels like, right? And now everyone wants to play it. In general, but still allow them to, to sort of flex that particular so metro just right. farming talk about obviously taking a little bit of that, uh, of that away from me but obviously it's still something that you know you feel like you could include in the game so many owl tanks yeah like, and you need a you need like, like obviously we're a big part of owl and that is a shitty th part of the game but like we need the overall success of the game is more important than you know the now it's just that uh, let, let's be realistic battle. you know a lot of people are complaining of like this so literally ruined the game for overwatch league players you're t we're talking about 25 to 30 people right if you go to competitive and go to tier 2 it really affected let's say over like in the world people who are going to lose their job over this is like to a point where 200 people right to counter something specific like you're looking for like i understand it sucks for those 200 people and i feel for them because they are friends they are people that i like but in the grand scheme of things it's yeah like i'm 200 is a is a good is a safe estimate of tier two as well across all regions or across all that kind of stuff people are getting paid money to that like it's such a small percentage and such a drop in the ocean that's also why jane's tank is also a take is also really dumb right let's say it is 200 people across the world that lost their salaries because of this tank change for overwatch 2 200 people let's say everyone's making fifty thousand dollars which we all know isn't true think about how little amount of money that is that they're saving that's what jane's take was is that's how much money we're gonna save think of that look at that bottom line baby like this guy's nuts on roadhog yeah even even with sort of yeah matt fucking rules yeah it's really good being as close as he was to the whole hog just get knocked away um, I, I sort of remember, I almost, it was almost like a tooltip text loading into game. It takes all the strategy out? No. Just because you take sort of a something out doesn't take away the strategy. It just changes the strategy. Strategy just doesn't disappear. All of a sudden with 5v5, it doesn't become, oh, now everybody just gets to shoot at each other 100% of the time. So therefore we're just playing CSGO. Like, that's not, it's not how the game's going to work. It's just going to change and be different. Just what people are saying. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, as I said, I'm not yeah, yelling at you. I'm yelling at the people who aren't here who are molding about it on like Twitter and stuff like that. Like Widow. Soldier. Oh, Widow. Yeah, Widow. So yeah, Widow is the sort of insane. like the echoing sound when you shoot in an open space. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's fantastic. You think Activision care about someone else's money? Exactly, right? Like, literally, these developers aren't doing it to affect anybody. They don't give a shit about anybody. They just want to make the best game. And if they think that going to 5v5 is going to create the best product for Overwatch 2, that is what they're going to do. And as if CODs and CSGO don't have any strategy? Yeah, exactly, right? Like, and being on the receiving end of Widowmaker's shot, it just feels so Yeah, they care about the massive player base, yeah. It's like, you you know what none of us are considering? Console players. 
Console players love <laughs> shit. Right, yeah, and they also are a larger majority of the audience. Sorry, that's a big part of it as well. Like, it's not just when you when you fire, but you're getting hit C9, by these a mega lol. These abilities seems like it yeah it has more of an impact it's not like we're you know we're, yeah we're giving you an earthquake less tactical it's valorant it's not going to make it a less tactical valorant it's going to make it a faster paced valorant as, as people getting hit by stuff here as doom for slams punches so. <laughs> and that's the difference right is they're trying to go back to more fps routes people would act as if strategy oh, yeah. just goes out the window when we go to 5v5 that's not so much done to yeah um I mean, I, I'm certainly not an audio guy. But I think Hex had a really good tweet. Look at this tweet by Hex. I think this is a great tweet by Hex because this summarizes so well. This is sports ball. So if you don't care about sports ball here, the forward pass will ruin football. The three point line will ruin the fundamentals of basketball. This designated hitter will ruin baseball. It's like, it's so easy to be doom and gloom when these kind of things are implemented. But looking back at all of those things, they're usually just, they're fine and they're good and they're probably better changes. It's gonna be different. It's gonna change, but it's gonna be okay. The immersion of the environment too. That's just the sounds of the environment. Is oh yeah, it's beautiful now. <laughs> if we could just walk through. Thank you, Mr. Blizzard. No, no one thank Matt. <laughs> it's only exactly right. Not so tranquil, I guess, when you're when you're fighting for your life with uh, nine other people. Right. Superman. I mean naturally you know th these are changes that you know some of them you thought about before obviously having played yeah it'll require a different strategy exactly kind of and, uh you know i'd love to get some of your final thoughts all of us de 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 depressed fuck's really gonna keep playing anyway exactly right sure you'll be, uh, you'll be people people who are complaining saying this is gonna ruin the game they're um, still gonna buy overwatch 2 yeah, and they're still I mean, gonna play Overwatch. I, I feel like i have to get a chance to play it first yeah, but, uh, yeah. super's where we all are we need to play it like uh, you know, Tang's gonna have a lot more pressure, I feel like. We need to see pro players, uh, we need to see high level people play this game now. Second, and then I think that'll, uh, that'll, that'll, to help you out that'll calm a lot of people down when they let pros play it and they let them talk about it and they show that. I think that'll give a lot of people presence of mind. People are just watching this, you know, developers play these 5v5s, but... You do get the plus side of having both supports uh, focus on you. The the too, so. Holy shit. Thank, thank you for keeping a level head and seeing uh, the benefit in these changes. Of course, as the live stream goes, and uh, as we get further and further. Is it just not going to say the second half of the sentence? Some of these changes get fleshed out even more. Super. Well, very much for joining us. I, I, will, re I, will, re I, will, re I will read out the second half of this. Yo, we had Gagger now. Thank you very much for the $69.69. .69. Nice. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. That's insane. Thank you. Thank you very much for keeping a level head and seeing the benefit in these changes. Like, fuck, we need to play the game and the game is meant to evolve. Exactly, right? People just hate change. On how it feels uh, for him to see these cha tank changes. I want to now take the opportunity to welcome... Am I the only one who thinks D will be hot trash? Might be really good in dive. Cupcake, obviously. We see you play a multitude of FPS classes. Feels kills every goddamn person uh, on the map. Yeah, and that's it, right? A, a lot of news today. Thanks. We're continuing to tease Why is Goodman there? Goodman is the lead hero designer. Some of your thoughts on what we have so far. Wait, is he a lead hero designer or is he oh, lead man, I really like gameplay designer? New, like, hero looks and, like, I think Diva will have a niche. It depends on how strong it is, really right? Cool, especially as like a support player. I'm seeing a lot of little like UI updates for like support here. No, dude, the game is dead for me and tier three collegiate tank players. Yeah. Absolutely. You're hero designer, right? Support main as well, so I'm looking forward to teasing yeah. a little bit more. Uh, her hair is awesome. Yeah, it is. Her room is just sick. About maybe supports. Bear room. A little bit more. Sorry, I shouldn't say her. Too. And of course, yes, we will be showing uh, another Never map know. in just a moment. Um, so let's take the opportunity to uh, to sort of bring uh, these these devs back in. Of course. Uh, where is Paddock? Yeah, where's Paddock to give us his insights? So far, because something that was teased at BlizzCon Online, uh, and we got to see a little bit of, was actually the hero looks right overwatch 2 is you know it's, it's a game that's set a little bit further sort of in the future as far as we can where's new heroes i assume they got they said that they were going to bring some extra things in so i'm i mean i want to see more right sort of speak to that because uh it's not just a like a, a jazz cupcakes warrus yeah <laughs> look at this warrus just Something vibing like in the back the passage of time being implied with some of these new looks yeah, that, that's part of it is the passage of time. You can see Ro Reinhardt is a little older. She, she had pronouns? I also. Sneak Volume up a tad, sorry. Yeah, I characters you. that um, there's a bit of age difference on them as well. A uh, bunch of guys are part of Overwatch now, so they have access to cooler tech in their outfits. <laughs> uh, it's just we're having fun kind of like in a way to show these guys have upgraded their equipment. They're ready to do battle in this new world uh fire here with their new overwatch gear so that she has the armor that fits the overwatch team uh yeah and just reaper is pretty amazing as well 
there's definitely a feeling of them looking sort of more high tech in a sense as well yeah so i mean you know i love that you kind of you kind of uh, this is cheeky you're kind of teasing uh little bits of the story or how the world changes out as we go <laughs> so that's just you know building my appetite up to to sort of see more about how the world is changing and, and what all these heroes are up to i mean you see obviously Widowmaker's got a change of hairstyle as well um tell us about what the development process hair. on these on these changes is like because i think it was sort of mentioned that there's sort of new tech available to developers to sort of bring these characters to life but i'd love to know how you go about refreshing or revamping or update some of these hero looks yeah we have a lot of cool very really cool engine up upgrades that you could see in some of those shots uh, i love widow's boob oh yeah detail. The everyone's like skin feel more natural their hair has a really awesome shader and it just it, you know, it's still stylized, but it just feels much more real, almost like you could touch it. Uh, this is in the environments as well. There's tons of nice detail. We've upgraded the lighting engine. Yo, so shadows are better. All the game does look just beautiful from where you see it, right? Immersive. It, it looks more detailed. More dynamic and more animated. Things it might be annoying world. because there the might be more random the shit, and that stuff tilts me off the face of the earth when I like collide into some that. random we stuff. But do it do you can't until, deny that it looked great. Kind of Turn, tune some knobs, knobs Just wait till the last map. Yo, Matt, spoiling. So we get to see Rio. Oh, we get to see Rome. Maintaining Overwatch style, keeping the game performance smooth. But if I don't get know, to see Sojourn play the game, though, I'm going to fucking flip level. a table, Matt, and hold you directly responsible. I'm curious about, like, the new, the new upgrades to the skins and, like, just the heroes themselves. And you guys have all the skins. It's got to be next, yeah. All the different heroes from Overwatch and, like, how challenging it is to bring them mm -hmm. in. And like update their looks. Can't as wait well, for you. You should have seen what Matt like told me. Matt told me to before this started. He's like, dude, everyone's gonna be so excited when they announce that they're doing so an open beta directly after this uh, two-hour panel. So example, everyone, everyone, get your Battle.net your browser is open so you can download it after this. So nice. our engine team is working. That's not true. What? What? You? What do you mean? You told me before. You told me before the. But it's still. You told me before the show that we're gonna have an open beta after the. Everything you see on these new 2.0. No. Ah. Ah. Okay. Sorry. Delete it off Reddit. Delete it off Reddit. These will all carry over to the older heroes or the older skins. So a lot of stuff looks even better than it did before. Yeah, I can only imagine. There's a bit of work there to to apply some of the new new um techniques to those guys but it's a beautiful upgrade to practically every single skin in the game so it, it, yeah. it'll be fun for players to see Appreciate is it, gonna it man. Be possible to like add more customization like with this new technology like unlocking different like color schemes or something like that or like special weapon variations even for like certain achievements or something like that so we have more ways to customize the way our heroes look an amazing question, but I, you have to wait and see. Oh no! What about like mixing and matching like skins and weapons? Is that gonna be possible? Like mm, using a weapon one. from yeah, one skin? One. Oh, because yeah. like that would be that would so be really cool if you can mix and match things. Right? Can you imagine like? Oh man. No, I mean, uh, we're, okay. we're already, we're theory crafting. You know, we're off to the races here already. I can't <laughs> like this I'm like, oh, so many ideas. We have a lot of fun stuff in store. Yeah. You do have something new uh, to show. It's like us, my favorite though. part is the visual. So. Well, speaking of yeah. which, Kake, Dion has uh, a new hero look to show us. Dion, do you want to talk us through this? New one? hero? <gasps> Not Sojin. Oh, this one will be, I think he's a. Torbjorn. Yep. So this is Torbjorn 2.0. Yo. You can see he's nice. a little, he's a He didn't older. grow just like Matt. He has a Who would have thought? Bit better technology and gear. And yeah, he's a uh, the Torbjorn we all know and love. He's just wobble wobble motherfucker. Advanced. Uh, yeah. Cool, very new, cool. Uh, you can see the hair shader really well on his uh, beard. <laughs> like imagine that but with like his summer skin like weapon okay. like, <laughs> cupcakes really trying to I, cup, cupcakes really trying to advocate so for this right now i've been like, like but seriously so that, I mean, summer yeah, skin i want a toy hammer I mean, some of the some of the changes are big right they're vibrant and obviously she's you know, great yeah she's doing a great job time great. and some are subtle you know it's the it's the patches she's one on of us she, she jeans, knows what the people the want connectors between super's like i just don't want to get cc and cupcakes like but seriously the summer game skin right we can see this gregarious uh, attitude from him very clearly displayed though i think that's very much still been 
brought to life. Overwatch 6 will be a 1v1 game. And you know, we want to upgrade the characters, but we don't want to lose that silhouette that's familiar to players, you know? Mm -hmm. He still looks like Torbjorn from a distance. He just looks better and more detailed up close, but it, he maintains that silhouette we come to know and love and like to shoot at. So one to ten, how would I rate him as shirt? Uh, that's a good old that, seven. I think it's a good one, not his best, the, the but it's classic. Doing some Try and true. The next uh, uh, kind of 2.0 is VFX on his, on his pack there. It looks great. Right. Too. Smoke coming off. Yeah, it's a serious modernization of, of you know, not, uh, yeah, not just obviously how his skin is. I can't give him a high. high. I can't give him too high, high, you know? Faces with the world yeah. that he's put in. He's, got, he's had some banger let's shirts. Let's here and talk a little bit more uh, about our next map. Rome was teased at BlizzCon Online, right? We've got these beautiful panoramas, these Colosseum looking things, this like sort of, mm -hmm. this sort of future Rome. But um, that is, that's obviously uh, coming up next and it needs a push map. So I want to talk Yo. a little bit more about how a push map is actually developed, right? The newest game type to the game, um, mm -hmm. gives some really unique situations to play through. Uh, let, let's delve in a d bit deeper. I have to assume, right? Like there's, there oh, has to be that some looks so cool. to the map. I'm sure that's, is that sort of- right. I want to fight in okay, there. What's important when designing a push map? Let's start there. So symmetry is obviously the number one important part. It, it makes it very competitive because both sides have a similar layout, but it also makes it tough to create a second one. So you had Toronto that we saw earlier where it was a more of an S curve layout to the battle. In Rome, you'll see it's kind of a C. You kind of cut through the Colosseum. It becomes tighter when you reach the robot once you see the players play this one was where we really found the way okay this is how we make iterations on push it, it at first the s curve was um, an easy one to go to you know it's make the map snake through mm -hmm. buildings and things but how do we switch it out for a different space and we knew we wanted to make rome we knew we wanted to go through the coliseum so that's kind of part of the initial design for this version of the push map but it's a very fun mode especially on um in rome i think the thematic of the scene plus pushing the robot the lighting is so much better enhances how fun what did you miss this game <laughs> gains out the game is now 5v5 in overwatch 2 between all that's the, the main that's the main one watch, and then a location that is obviously known yeah. to us and sort of thinking about how mm -hmm. you know the, the passage of time cap? might change it no, i want to know um you know you, you mentioned the first thing you mentioned dion i feel like was that like no cap. competitive as a result of that symmetry uh, and, mm -hmm. and you guys as the developer team on Overwatch have had a good chance to see how so many of these maps play out at the highest competitive level. So I'm curious to know like you know, how much is our Overwatch, rather Overwatch League a factor when you're sort of considering a, a game type or a map design like this, you know? How often do you think, oh, like how the players could break this or, you know, they're gonna sort of, <laughs> you know, go for the 1% plays on this kind of map. Is, does that factor into the dev process all that much? Um, I think, so. I think yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff could probably I mean, answer this bit. Yeah, I mean, they um, certainly, I feel like it's hard to uh, imagine a, a player base sort of breaking a map apart probably as much as the Overwatch teams, <laughs> Overwatch League teams do. Um, and they will find that stuff fast and it, it use even the smallest things. Um, so yeah, I mean, we definitely, as far as like the, the, the specific layout, we're looking at a lot of stuff uh, quite a bit, but especially when we're developing a new mode, um, it's very much taken into account. It's impossible to balance, yeah, and that's as okay. Was brought up earlier. Um, you know, based on the rule set, we want to make sure if we can avoid it, we want to avoid any kind of tie situation. Sure. Um, this this mode certainly prevents that. Um, and then, as Aaron was talking about earlier, like we were debating whether or not this should be like kind of easy to push to the end, and then you know you get a point, and then the other team can you know maybe it's multiple rounds, and each mm -hmm. push is one point. But then it's like you get in that potential tie situation, and this, the, you lose some of that sort of sort of epic tension of um, pushing it those last little bits and people fighting over those I've, I've already talked and, about a Caparana. Um, I'll so talk about it after think, the, uh, uh, yeah, the whole we, thing and I'll summarize my especially thoughts. with new modes thinking about how they're going to be played and competitive we had so many uh, matches that came down to two three meters this is oh, yeah. such a fun just you feel good even losing you know you're like that was a great <laughs> battle because it felt like we fought really hard for those last two uh -huh. three meters this map is genetically engineered for play-by-play -play casters. I like that. More opportunities for us to just <laughs> yell nonsense. Uh, we're going to jump in and, and check this one out. Got, we've got a bunch more questions. I'm sure, Kalkat, you do as well here. But, I mean, first impression is, is wow. This is an incredible vista. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Absolutely stunning stuff. We, we talked about, you know, Dion, you mentioned like the S-shape sort of uh, thing. But it looks like this. there's some twists and turns here. It's almost like the 
The art team is oh, so yeah, good at Overwatch. Yeah, well I want to see this point. map. It does. There's a little bit of C shape, and then there's this bridge overpass that's pretty fun to encounter. I, I think uh, I'm curious to see how this battle plays out. Overwatch employees. I'm not owned. I'm not. I, I'm not employed by Overwatch. Yeah, I, feel like I can say whatever the fuck I want about Overwatch on this map, and we'll see right away. I say this the game's the trash all the time. Is right in the. You don't really get a uh, sanitized down. Policy, and basically, where the. But yeah, I, after, I'm going to do it after. I don't like talking too much over them. I, I did a lot and, uh, of talking during that, Rio, so I kind of wanted to sort of break know, this kind of like, Are they not going to uh, show us any new heroes? It's sort of simple in ge Matt, geometry. what am I watching like, for? The, the, the subtlety there is, because yeah. it's got a slight curve. Sorry, sorry, Jim, you cowards. It's so amazing. And you can see certain of these are blocked off and certain of them are open um, as far as in between the pillars. And that was actually iterated on quite a bit. I remember um, opening them up, closing them. In fact, you see the tops are actually open, so you can climb over or fly over them. So we still allow some flanking routes. If you're like a Pharah or Genji and you want to get cheeky. Look for um, Joe. <laughs> but you want to close it off entirely. So that one section was sort of everyone's favorite right away in playtesting. Um, this can be, this map's going to break some people's computers. I think it would be fine. Like Overwatch has never been bad. Right. So we'll see it here. I think it's 2CP. Uh, sorry, uh, King of the Hill that has the most. It does not go unnoticed, by the way. The duration of Dude, the Dude, that Anagun sounds so uh, weird. Instead of being like, oh, the sleep. Pew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds yeah. like a laser. Pew. I love that. that the... It's funny watching. Sorry, I mean, I just love the curvature actually sort of. It actually reduces line of sight, right? So. You cannot yep, now just mm -hmm. sit at one end of this this sort of track and see the other if you're a sniper. So even that small tweak, you know, has balance implications. What the hell was that, that? I'm sure that was a wisdom right quick, I think. To quite a great degree. I think um because me and Kurt Kegger both support mains, I think something we we're definitely gonna be wanting to talk about here is that it's not just Senyata's HUD that's that's gotten a change, right? It seems like every sport looks a little bit different when it comes to the HUD and some of those abilities that interact with teammates. Yeah. Which, like, there's thank even you very much, money. placement of the Shark orbs. Shark thank you for a thousand bits. Uh, You're watching because we pay you so to watch this? Like, Pamper your cats and get a corgi. Yeah. No corgis. No, yeah. um, I think God that's damn it, Shark really nice. Thank you for the one thousand like, bits. The little changes with like having mercy, like it shows when mercy is healing somebody oh, got a lot him. more clearly. Shadow you know, Storm. Like, having the, the icons. Shadow Storm for Al. Who it's on, you know. Um, I like Shadow Storm for Al. I, I wish that, to see more with um, Ana. Like I would love to see with Anna. Yeah, shoot the Lucio, bro. Show, like, <laughs> so Lucio just left. dancing in. Oh, like on the oh. UI. Oh, that's a good cool idea. Yeah. Like that would be that. so cool. Wait, what did Cupcake just say? I feel like I have to tell my DPS player that's in the enemy back line. I don't know if you yeah. saw that, but I just mm -hmm. let the fire out of the air and they just I don't know. I saw someone, yeah. I like that idea. You like cluttered? No, yeah. it's not very cluttered. You, you gotta remember the top left and the top right is 100% based off of spectator UI. I'm not sure who it was. And asleep on UI. That might be important to know. Yeah. That's my favorite part. You sleep, you sleep against you accidentally with a blade and someone just wakes them up because they have no idea. That, that you, yeah, because yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. when you exactly. shoot it into them and you're like, did I shoot, um, did I sleep the high Nunu McCree or not? <laughs> or is he a lame? And then you peek and you're like, if Mercy no, I'm dead. He's, he's, he's still alive. Right? <laughs> your screen sort of, he's still awake. In, in, on live, your screen sort of takes on like a sort of a very slight non-intrusive glow. But it seems here you've mm -hmm. also changed. I think the Zen UI is really cool. I think both the changes are very good. I really do like both the changes. I think they look good. like, um, a nano boost, for example. Oh, I can't Did Zen lose his wristbands? The, the one P nano, nano boost. Some, his wristbands uh, is like a primary yeah. part of uh, some of his uh, the, skins, though. General, so I don't know how they can like you know grip it past do that long time. Uh, oh, the elimination! I never I mean, even noticed the elimination really change I mean, until now. I like the, the I like the blocks. passes, and I, those emails get sent out all the time. Like, oh, look at these cool you know, skin changes <laughs> and you know, tech we're getting, and then there's also it the looks cleaner, yeah. That, and that's what they really did with the whole UI is they they just really made everything even if I'm not blockier and cleaner. I think a lot of people are gonna hate it, but I think. I, I really like it. It's so. awesome, like day to day, seeing all the changes. I mean, yeah, I, I'm sure your your inbox is sort of swarmed with them. Um, they announced I, the new hero name. Show. Oh, look, it was mentioned at. Uh, no, uh, I, I, well, I, I, I almost said it. I almost said it. I, almost said it. I, I almost said it. I was this close to saying it. Fuck you, Septul. I see through your shit. How dare you? You fuck. I was this close. Oh no, Zen. Oh, Shadowstorm. Right, so that, that has a long history, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this probably was say it, um, absolutely probably not. Probably most of the people who really follow the game closely are aware. Um, we've uh, back it up, boys. We'll get it the, next time. Uh, assault map or TCP is the hell called, was that? Um, a lot of people had a lot of concerns what with that it, sound? and we've tried to make a lot of changes. Was she to back? It. Um, in fact, I think what it's like people might not know is um, we've gone through multiple. Yeah, look at this healing UI. This UI is so cool. 
but none of them yeah, ever Glockham. really were good Yo, enough to robot go angels kind of cracked um, look at this ui the ui is so cool it just <laughs> looks back, cooler right time we had, i had a new designer join and one of the first things he gave him was like oh it was on just my yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like the hardest problem ever go ahead and solve it you guy <laughs> it's like oh that's kind of rough actually in retrospect uh, but uh so you know <laughs> we've got a lot of went through a lot of changes and um but that's the support the we were like We'd have to make so many changes to get this where we want to be. Like, is it even the same mode anymore? And at that point, if we're getting to that degree, why don't we just make a different right. mode? Yeah, let's make new. Why even try to like, yeah. you know, change it to that degree? So that's kind of how that ended up going about coming about, and um, a lot of it was feedback from the players. Yeah, feedback from that's us. Kind of spicy. <laughs> You're trying to say that there's other modes in development. Are you trying to imply that? <laughs> uh, two, if they listened to us that 2CP was just wet trash and was unfixable and they actually they, they actually dealt with it right now. How crazy New York was sorry, Oh, Gilfies. with grab Oh, sorry, New York was We experimented a lot with New York Ooh. Before landing on the mode that we chose Let's go for CP It seems like and, so many possibilities for that kind of map, right? Right uh, Temple of Anubis, when we first showed that at BlizzCon the shipping version actually changed. I actually love you know, that it goes up and around. CCB I think that's such a cool like dynamic of this first fight, came right? Out. Uh, yeah. so we actually the version we show shared and the version that shipped with the game was pretty different from the choke point standpoint. Aiming into the sun is going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be like jib all over so again. Hopefully it's not as bad as jib. I hope they fix the lighting right? issues that yeah. happen on like Gibraltar right when you and look at the sun and you're just permanently blinded. I was just going to comment it because we were there, although they just left it. But the other thing I was mentioning about this map, because I mentioned two things, is that area we, we just left was, it's like this oh, you done goof. like corkscrew, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and it's itself, super almost. interesting. Yeah, it like goes, it basically flipped on itself and goes over itself. And uh, you can see it coming up here. So we're not going to uh, see so the beautiful art design of Paris and Noobs. It'll still be in PVE, I think. And I think they'll try and find a way. They're not just going to like throw away the assets. I assume they'll do something with them. first playing it, I remember Two is the bot's name. We yeah. had our first feedback session where it was like, I don't know if I like this or not. It's either right. amazing or it's terrible. I can't even tell. <laughs> like it's it's super interesting and very impactful. Uh, and so we were like, I think that means we keep two is my it. best friend testing it and keep iterating. So friendship ended with uh, Matt. Two is now my best friend. Oh, good sleep. It's more important if you can get the, the, the good stuff of it. Um, so after a lot of iteration, it's 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 definitely persisted and it's become kind of. The most interesting spot to play around because it's, it's a lot like, of drama there. <laughs> yeah. What do you the think about Overwatch free to play? I would not be surprised if Overwatch 2 went free to play at least for pass. PvP. If you just sit in the middle of that pass as Reaper or something like that and just drop down, of course you yeah. gotta worry about gonna be jumping up on you or something. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they have Overwatch right 2 is um, they have like a battle yeah, pass system. Like Overwatch 2 is free to play so uh, for the like PvP, this, but the PvE you need to pay like that, 15, 20 bucks for it. Right? enough, when you're going under that pass. Does that mean battle pass? Like, probably. That is that is the direction I would send Overwatch in, and I feel like that's the very obvious solution. But maybe they'll do something different. And you're going, there's no sounds. You're like. Okay, what is about to happen here? Where are they going to become? Will there be raids like, and dungeons? Uh, it's not really too, like that kind of PvP and PvE. <laughs> I don't think it's not really like Destiny Two. Reaper but I could be wrong. We don't really know, right? Of, uh, so it's like counters. Gibraltar, right? You, you go through that first little underpass, and you just know it's a little too. I don't think anyone loves the PvE. I think that we don't know enough about the PvE. It looks really cool, and it'll be interesting. I just don't know how much longevity it's going to have, right? We don't. We haven't seen enough of the PvE. It looks awesome. But it, we don't know sort of anything about the gameplay really, right? Sort of bend, and then outside on the corkscrew. What is a battle pass? Uh, like it's like you, you a it's like a monetization system that exists in like most of it. Oh, okay, every you game, now, you know, it's like you uh, play the game and then you get rewards, and if you buy the battle pass, you get the rewards for buying the battle pass and playing the game. It's absolutely beautiful. I love all the like architecture and everything in it. I was fascinated when I was watching the preview during the Blizz Online on it, and um, I would you know love to get in there and like just go explore it and look around what about replayability like, that's going to be the biggest out, issue for pve right like, what the best way to go about this is because there's a lot to it it's it's a little confusing like looking at it from like this perspective but i'm sure once you get in there and you actually like play it it makes a lot more sense you know look at the events and how they've been trying to get skins yeah that's very battle pass guest model right i'll play the game and you'll get them hecticness you know sort of around the bot yeah exactly and this this is like a game mode that's catered to like giving these like adrenaline sort of pumping moments so he wasn't going to talk right it's because they haven't like the developers haven't been talking too much about the the game so it's a lot of just like reacting to what's happened what i love though is that these buildings don't just seem for decoration like even look up at the top right side right like all these buildings you can go in so many so many more of these nooks and crannies that you can actually 
mm -hmm. explore. That seems like a way more intensive exactly. map design process yes. as well. Because you have to think oh, of big everything. Bump. You cannot leave a stone unturned when you sort of turn this tapestry exactly. into, you know, something vibrant like this. Oh. Incredible stuff. There it is. So cool. Right, that was your first look of obviously at some gameplay on Rome. A beautiful map, and my God, yeah, I really think that uh, the shot calls out there are going to have to be a mile. Are you winning, son? Like sort of. of the, ten sort of minutes. Yeah, we got ten minutes uh, as it to sort of finalize their announcement, uh, right? Really exciting stuff. I mean, we we already sort of got a feel for the game mode, but it's crazy just how different. I, I don't know if you feel the same, Cupcake. How different this is it? Feels live gameplay? Toronto, I doubt even it. Even though it's the same game type, but the map sort of changes the feel and the flow. No, they so haven't talked about anything to do with like scoreboards or. It does. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot different. Um, I don't play it like a high end. The gameplay like, was like, wait, the gameplay so was actually live. How it's gonna work on somebody. I thought it was just like, recorded and they just my, showed it. Like I'm like the really? average oh, okay. watch player. They were lucky. You guys were lucky. The games are pretty close. I'm <laughs> like I'm plat. You know, a lot, a lot of my Overwatch experience as a support. Like I solo queue support. Oh, yeah, so just right. Oh you know, wow. Like wow. it's the struggle is real, and so my experience. Is <laughs> oh, like, Bunny Crusade you know, update. My, tank, my tanks are just like Leroy Jenkins in, and I'm like, okay, here we go, and I'm just trying to like keep up, you know. So I'm curious you know how that's gonna go on like as like plat games you know <laughs> i mean i'm sure i'm gonna find out because i sure as heck won't be playing in any other rank than plat myself really quickly we... so y'all know how i feel okay yeah i, I mean yeah like i said you're in good company i'll make i'll make uh, no bones about uh my standing in the game that was incredible uh thank you jeff and dion for walking us through rome uh, we we started from that sort of vibrant sort of overlook and then we were straight into the action. I, I really love just the, the juxtaposition of sort of the futuristic tech plus a, a really historic location. Uh, and that's a lot of fun. We, I mean, I speaking of incredible Steam. locations. I, apparently everyone's opening up Steam now. Map Hello? Show everybody. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> stick around. There's still more to come. Uh, a new map, an in-depth look that you haven't heard anything about. New map. Coming up on the other side of this break. So stick around. Oh my God, they're showing us all the maps. None of the, PB none of the heroes. Developer live stream. Ooh, another map. I'm down. I'm down. No hero. I, I, no. Yo, look at that. Yeah, that blob is kind of cool. It kind of looks like Splatoon, you know, when Anna throws the nade now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. what do we think? What, what map do we think it's going to be? I think. Oh, fuck. Australian. Oh yeah, I think an Asian map. Yeah, I think Tokyo is probably a good shout actually. I would say an Asian region. Tokyo is probably a good shout. India's interesting. Like something in India. Singapore. China. Oh. China. Okay, there could be a Chinese. Are there currently any... Is there currently a Chinese map in the... Rotation? Li Zhang. Oh, Li Zhang. Yeah, of course. I was like, wait. Taking the lead. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah, there's, there, it could be a lot of things, actually. Wherever Sojin is from. Interesting. That could be interesting. Any Russian maps? Yeah, Volskaya is Russian, right? Sojin is Canadian? Well, shit. <laughs> there goes your idea, Liz. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, because we just had Toronto. Think about Amsterdam? Could be a good shot. Paris, but fixed. Welcome back, oh, everybody. As, uh, we get no, ready bring back for Mitch. our final map of the day. Uh, thanks to Mitch. Thanks to all the other uh, content creators that dropped by the stream. It was uh, a ton of fun to have them back to the back to the the original crew, though. Uh, as I know, a, a lot has changed, obviously, uh, with Overwatch 2's PvP. Uh, from I mean, a lot changed with Overwatch 1's PvP throughout the eternity. But I think like this is a, a pretty drastic kind of change from what the players are used to at home. Uh, I guess for the players at home now, like, uh, you know, what can the expectations be? You know, obviously, like you guys have mentioned, a lot of this is still work in progress. Yeah, that's a great 
it's a, it's a great point to bring up. And I think it's, um, it's Maybe important to recognize that while we're really excited about a lot of the changes that we're making to the game, I think there's probably a lot of people, you know, watching the stream um, that can't help but wonder how it how it's going to affect them, you know? And, and um, like, we have a lot of tank players in the game. We have a lot of off-tank players in the game. Um, and something that you, that you said resonates with me where Overwatch has changed over the years. Um, we talked about, you know, before we had hero limits or but before we had saying that, you know, yeah. like goats was a very popular part of Overwatch for a long time where there, it was, people were actually running three tanks instead of two tanks. And I think one of the, one of the things that, that has always been a part of Overwatch is, is the game does change over time. Um, and I know that for some people, um, th it, it's probably jarring to to look at a change like this you know or, or maybe it's it's a little bit shocking because um any any time a big change like this happens and you start settling settling into like a pattern of an uncertainty or of fear you you really translate it within your current context um but the the game what, what are we doing will here continue Aaron? to evolve and continue to shift the the shift from um the shift into Rolock, it, it changed some of the some of the meta of the game, yeah. um, and now people look at the role of of or all of the roles a little different. No, they're going to keep Rolock. They They've been giving they did everything previously, and I think, he, I that think that he's just talking about the generality of, of like, something like this. And so it might this be is just easy another to say, like, step well, in the evolution. I'm an off tank player. How is this going to affect me? Yeah, he's, he's essentially player? saying this. Yeah, stop crying. We've changed so much in time. Like this is just another change to make the game better. Tanks, but. If you're an off tank player, if if you're a, a diva player or a Zarya player, you can still be a diva or a Zarya player. And what we're hoping is, is when you get in the game, because a lot of this is about how it feels to play those heroes. When you get in and actually feel what it's like to play as as Zarya or Diva, you'll come away um, really enjoying the experience. Yeah, I think one thing you mentioned, which is a really good shout, is that yeah, like you're you kind of view this in the context of like how you have it now right where you're like mm -hmm. well wait like if i just had no 5v5 today like how would i how would i do like zarya or you know how it may work but uh i think to some of the stuff that you guys have spoken to especially you jeff like there's just so many changes that go on with the heroes <laughs> that are involved with this that yeah like i i think to your point aaron like you really once you get a feel of it that's when you really kind of it sets in yeah, it's and it, it is a big overhaul. We get that it's a that it's a big overhaul, but at the same time, it still feels like Overwatch when you're playing Overwatch. Like the heroes all still feel amazing and incredible. You have these great plays. There is still a ton of strategy for your team and everybody on it um, to to use. Roll, and so up, roll Q would ruin I the game forever and shuffle change, it, but stop all creativity like, and it did the opposite. It's yeah. still the same game that that we've been playing all along. Yeah, it keeps all those core aspects that everybody loves about Overwatch, yeah. but you know, just, yeah, just kind of like changes a little bit of the core and push it forward. Uh, the final map we have today, uh, Dion, and uh, that when, when, when we were going over like, what are we going to show today and like some of the maps, I was like, this map needs to be last uh, <laughs> because they <it> just <laughs> like absolutely stunning. Uh, Monte Carlo, talk to me a little bit about it. Monte Carlo. Okay, so Monte Carlo and another map where it's this beautiful, opulent, the wealthy in the Overwatch universe go oh, here to man. play, you know? Uh, flying yachts, casinos, luxury Yo. hotels, AI F1 races. It's, it's, we're another map. We're having a lot of fun just Yo. applying this Overwatch aesthetic to the world and F1 the, payload. This universe in Monte Carlo or Monaco. So. Uh, and this also has a nice story connection to the overall um, story of Overwatch 2, so look out for that. As uh, looks like a cool map, later. but yeah, it's the, it's it's just gorgeous. I mean, and the one thing that strikes me about this map, and uh, I, I think you guys can obviously see it best, is that each point and area very of the map pretty, plays yeah. so drastically different. Uh, you know, once we'll actually see it in play, but. Uh, is that something that you guys fan, are I am in love with it, yeah. design of just like how you guys can change? Do you think like, they intentionally did that thing as Monaco is this really, weekend? You know, empower certain heroes or certain roles to really kind of take advantage of that. 
we're definitely doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the Overwatch 2 maps have features in them that we, that we haven't built before. Yeah, almost um, certainly, yeah. Everyone just got a, a sure look just... at Rome. And Ren we have that sort of, um, sort of like switchback section in it, or or like the the loop section, and it, and that was something we tried three or four times over the entire course of Overwatch <laughs> de development, and we're just never able to get it to work right. And and on Rome, we we feel like we finally cracked the code on something like that. Um, in in Monte Carlo, there is this really cool uphill section in the map. Um, and it's it's steeper and, and longer than anything we've done before, um, and so there's a lot of um, like difference in elevation there, um, and, and I feel like it it kind of just speaks to um, some of the some of the changes that we're willing to make um, with this game in order to, to introduce new gameplay and to have it feel fresh and, and vibrant for players. Yeah, I definitely think we can start off that final map. We can keep this discussion going because that was one of the first things that I noticed about Who's this the engine like, provider? Oh, what if like, the payload on, breaks down? Like, oh, this feels <laughs> like be, better overrated. be a like, Merc fucking like engine in that thing. Watch, like, here, here's if I got a Williams and, engine and in there, I'm fucking done. I'm not, I'm not pushing like, the car. I, Someone else pushed the car. I can't remember a map. You know, maybe even I think people, when they see it, probably would compare to like, I know Eichenwald when you're kind of going around the castle, but it's even steeper than Merc? Wait, actually? Like, you know, I remember. Why do they cars suck so bad then? You're like, oh, man how were they getting up there like uh it, it, it's such a cool dynamic though yeah definitely okay. it shows you and, how much i know about um, one i can a great example they have of no it, money well uh, maybe of, they shouldn't have bought it through a map. Mercedes this engine. one <laughs> doesn't have a large structure in the middle of it so you're you're going up this really big elevation and oh it's wait wait oh wait open. oh wait i thought um, it was so going for two hours i thought this was the end between right. the two teams as they're trying to push yeah oh they actually have f1 teams and i i'm a big fan of class with the cars and everything it's just so cool as uh yeah, you just kind of see both of these teams uh, <laughs> you know, come out of the spawn. Just a, a lot of detail. I love leaning into the F1 uh, when when you have like the kind of car going around the track. Uh, even the checkpoints is being, you know, kind of like there's a lot of uh, us. There's dozens uh, of us F1 kind of fans in here. Being like a race. <laughs> dozens uh, of us. As Yeah, you see this. So this first point is uh, really interesting. I, I think for a lot of people is you know, where, where we'll see Zarya on defense it's like a, a solo That's tank a like you can you can play so many different ways right uh I've I've seen people play like really close up by like some of these staircases a little bit further back you can play the snipers up on the bridge you can play like soldier up on the bridge I think literally uh, on just adds so uh, much more dynamics to play yeah I, I binge drive to survive as well like a few months yeah, ago yeah, that got me into F1 payload is uh, another we're having fun with the payload here is uh... It's a payload AI map. We got double sniper. Oh. Double sniper Zaya. I don't know if this is going to be the meta uh, when we uh, open and, uh, everything up, you know, but we'll see. The, the escort maps. How does that different from you know some of the other things you guys are working on? You know, like push. Uh, you know, like uh, you know hybrids controls. Like, uh, is there a different type of philosophy when going into Star like a map? I like new. I like new, like new uh, as well. Modes? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of differences mm -hmm. between these types of modes, and when you when you do map design on Overwatch, like one of the things you always have to think about is is where the spawn rooms are going to be and how you're going to get out of the spawn rooms. And obviously, it's it's different coming out of a spawn room is Sal, different on too a good. payload map than any of our other map types because you immediately start interesting. You see them? With the do they have this in Overwatch One? Um, I don't think they do. The, the directional one of the toughest things about developing you see payload he has a direction of where his mercy is in relation to getting healed. To like and you can see the beam. You see this? This? That's really cool. Just to be able to get that doesn't payloads. exist in Overwatch One, right? Usually I'm not gonna, have enough space that's definitely new, right? On the side I was like, wait, so that, that doesn't exist, right? Um, that's there, pretty cool. I actually really like that change. Tight for like fire maps, plays. But they're very so they don't short, fucking like, leave right me behind. The pieces of shit. Fire plays. Tight, but that's that's for a short period of time. And so when you do start making these wider areas, it becomes very difficult to control sight lines, and it gets. I swear to God, that's in Is it? Very long sight lines. They might have made it more prominent. Like I noticed it no straight away really on this one. Like if they an had it in, if they have it in this one, I haven't. I haven't seen really it. try to control those huh. things. I mean, it's, I think it's why it? you see that a lot of the payload maps, they they. It's not obvious, right? Yeah, because I don't notice it when I play Farah. And so I'm much curious of that to know if other Farah players controlling are sight lines, and then also I'm just the mercy so I don't. Areas for for a team to. I just want them to stop leaving me behind. Oh, this is the section. Yeah, yeah, so I was gonna the say that's the, that's the area of there, verticality the pool, where, right. like, uh, there's a, a sniper perch up here to kind of like that, uh, you know, right hand side if we're looking at it. But yeah, just uh, this poses so many different obstacles for teams. But I also think it's it's 
kind of presents multiple ways to play where uh, you see right now both teams playing the Zarya, but like interesting play this really has like a wild kind of flank up, up the, the right side here you play really slow kind of work your way around i love this high so, ground yeah i feel like this is such a unique high ground we have nothing like this high ground <laughs> Zarya seems to be the tank choice i don't know if it's going to be overpowered or not. <laughs> yeah and you I can guess see, so that change is pretty new <laughs> you can see from a visual standpoint uh, when making a payload map they're pretty large maps for an overwatch space so we want the visuals to kind of change. Oh my god, Quirky Turtle is farming. The world looks different to them. You know, they, there was, it was flat before, and then you've reached the first objective, and now you're on the hill. And they'll move into the hotel for the final objective. So there's this visual progression to kind of your completing objectives. And you feel like you're making progress through the map because the world around you is somewhat changing as it goes along yeah, kind of like uh like dorado almost like right. if you were to kind of think of uh you know a, a map from the live game where you, you kind of start through people are bitching on youtube because they want 222 two, two back dude they could said it they could like here's what would have happened the interior if they were like hey we're gonna map, keep everything 222 two, two, two. everything's gonna I've stay seen, the same uh, we're just gonna add some heroes add some maps literally uh, everyone would complain see it but just the, the Overwatch stream makes some drastic uh, changes and some really cool quality of life with the, some great we, evidence we to support inside, why they're doing these things. Everybody freaks bit, out that they're changing the uh, game. Like really you literally like can't win. Literally, YouTube is literally just like going to go against the opposite so of whatever anyone, whatever they decide. So, yeah, so it's a I think it's a good cool change. Space. You just got to look objectively at like, you know, I guess what the smart people are saying and like what the objective people are saying. Changes a little bit, just the way that the game is changed. I'm so glad they made these changes. So am I. I played presence or the importance of high ground. Overwatch 2 really PvP of BlizzCon in, in like 2019 and I was like so to give the map's cool more of that to but it literally feels like Overwatch they haven't changed anything the game is literally just Overwatch I don't feel like this is a new game I'm not interested and it's not exciting and this isn't going to bring a ton of people back yeah, no, I, 5v5, the changes that they made, the gun sounds, the passives, the way that it's going to change the way the game is played is awesome. It's interesting. It's dynamic. And it actually seems like it is going to solve a lot of... It, it, it's going, it might make a whole different set of problems, but it probably will solve a lot of the issues that we have with Overwatch 1 right now. So I'm really, I'm really excited about it. It allows everybody to kind of have some access of high ground, which brings into play i know anna really kind of effective here at the high ground with the grenades as uh we see the payload kind of go over the line and the, the car will go inside of the casino just because people don't like it doesn't I mean they're irrational the i'm not saying i'm not completely saying that <laughs> i'm saying i think youtube chat is irrational is sort of what i is sort of the take that i'm bringing here. i'm not saying anyone who doesn't like 5v5 is irrational i'm saying youtube chat is irrational i'm saying that a lot of people are just knee-jerk reacting to the fact that it's different therefore i don't like it the f1 car is pretty cool yeah you can see the high ground in the back over there it's actually really difficult for us i don't remember this being in any f1 race um one of the things we do in overwatch is um our stairs are very shallow um and we don't typically have any steep ramps in the entire game um and i think the game plays better that way it feels smoother like that um but it makes it so hard that it just kills the level designers on the project. Apparently we could try it before forming an opinion. Ground. Yeah, and I feel um, like that's a lot of people, right? Like I'm not space. sold on 5v5. Oh, yeah, that, that's actually but really I like the interesting, interesting dynamic of what I they're talking I about, how they think it's going to open up the map a lot more because you don't have two tanks. And I agree. I think it's going to open up the game so much it's going to be played in such a different style. You know what the most interesting thing that I, I, I've i noticed since I've started watching this? People are actually shooting at each other. Like, maybe that's because we're, we're not playing with the highest ranked players, but it actually feels like everyone's able to shoot at each other and they're moving and it doesn't feel like they're all just have to walk through a choke of six players all shoot a um, shield and then they just have this massive clash and then really some it's decided like by whose player dies first due to a lack of healing or something like that so right it actually looks like we're playing an fps game again it actually feels like all that kind of stuff kind of develop a, a mental well, you. 3d image of where everything's going of, of what max or hamilton who wins this weekend i'm not very informed outside of uh, i hope max does it's easier i hope to do that with showing where stairs it's also easier to push thing. up a shallower staircase. Reminds me of early Overwatch, staircase. right? And that's what I, I hope that they can the get back to this a, a little bit, right? Character physics work. Um, it's also smoother to move on steep staircases or on on shallow staircases. I was gonna say the only the only really I guess steep staircase I can think of is uh, you know, the one on like Horizon Lunar Colony. Uh, you know, on the TF2 the plays like this change. Yeah, that's me. Balcony. Oh, I mean, yeah, that, that Robert Angel. I don't want to say that was a little bit your fault, but it's fine. It worked. 
I know we've all been there where a junk rat is sitting on top of the stairs with Horizon. You can't see where he's shooting you from, and you're just yeah. kind of getting <laughs> pelted on the way up. Uh, it's, it's not the, the best of feelings, you know? Yeah. Uh, they haven't talked yeah, about pre alterations really to current maps that, based on sorry. 5v5 changes. Um, which makes me think that they're probably not thinking about <laughs> didn't they just change cod to 4v4 uh yeah they did recently right they changed cod to 4v4 and then everyone got really mad about like how everyone every team had to cut a play kind of like what overwatch league is going through now right one of the cool things about uh this map that i definitely saw when watching it was that like the attackers can actually like show me how those arms like you can go around Liz, uh, where you see, up there. Uh, yeah. yeah, curly mustache uh, <laughs> rotating around, uh, and, and and it's connected. Uh, that's something we haven't really seen in a lot of Overwatch maps. Yeah, we try to. We're we're very intentional with the way we do flanking routes, and we we try to make it so that at least one team, like the team, can be aware of um, people that are coming on a flank. Okay. Um, How? And we usually don't try to let you get Jay Sui, let's go the defense without having some way of knowing that it's coming or having the offense burning something like that mm -hmm. and we think this one's Proje fair. I like how they've changed a lot of the projectiles and the sound design and the the visual design and stuff like that but ho hopefully this one's fair depending on how your game goes it's fair or not <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> depending on who else is in the test uh, I actually have some questions from uh Twitter that uh you know some people have been uh Pulling and just kind of. Wait, we're uh, legit really watching top 50 Overwatch 2 gameplay right now? God damn it, girl. Uh, for you guys, what change to, uh, you know, character, buff, or nerf you guys most looking forward to that you guys have uh, played around, implemented with thus far? Yeah, here comes Twitter. Wow, I mean, that's a. That's, um. It's a, a great lot. question, you know, to ask yesterday, but I think now that we've gone over. Um, gone over a lot of what we and that was my problem with these Twitter questions so is that people aren't going to be able to ask relevant we've heard so much shit at this point the Twitter questions are going to feel redundant right to, to the tank role, we're asking questions that we didn't have any context before so it feels like it's not going to be very interesting in the game so um, as well as like the the some of the the work that we've been not doing, sold on the gun sounds um, yet uh with uh, like CC abilities in the game, so it's, it's really hard. But I think I'm gonna have to play before. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. My personal one is actually the one that we saw from BlizzCon Line was the Reinhardt stuff. Uh, yes, as somebody who's always wanted to play Reinhardt, who's pretty tragic at it, uh, <laughs> being able to be a little bit more. Tell us the release date. So yeah, they haven't given us any dates or any new heroes or anything like that. More offensive, so. uh, is the type of Reinhardt play I want. Uh, on, you know, when I just charge in without talking to any of my teammates currently. Yeah. Work. I'm sure that, now you can I'm, do I'm, that. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that won't work in Overwatch 2 either, no. but I can at no. least put it in my mind that bit. it could be a possibility. <laughs> yeah. That's always the promise of Reinhardt um, in any version of Overwatch. Oh, no, I maze in the game. That moment where you get to drop the shield and go in and just start laying waste to people. It feels so good. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, you know, you play Reinhardt and you come out and you feed a few times. You're like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe this isn't for me. And then you just land that. Do you see? No, Al's not gonna go one, two, two until Overwatch two comes out, guys. And then you're just like, yep. I'm, yeah. I'm, there'll be there'll be an off season before they go one, two, two. Don't worry about that. Good, uh, right? There, there'll be there'll be a there'll be a situation like that. From Twitter, that how do you guys look at maintaining the the balance between PvP and PVE? I assume they're kept like completely separate, like different environments, like. But how do you guys how, how do you guys look at that? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because uh, we talked a lot about that early when we sort of started developing, you know, much larger PVE games. One off season. You know, like Overwatch the, Two release date later this year confirmed, and that's it. Like that. Well, that becomes the question, right? Is Overwatch Two going to become Overwatch come before Overwatch League next year? I'm I'm not hopeful. If I'm being honest. You, you know, and we don't even have a beta yet. We don't have anything. I think it's very unlikely. I don't think we see Overwatch until the end of 2022. If I'm being realistic right now. Early playtest of PVE was sort of like big slam. more, and then we started getting into. Oh, the pin! Oh, yo! Look at that cancel pin! Now, when you completely fuck it up, you can cancel it. Please, someone kill the mercy. This mercy has been living in their backline. Ultra fire he has where he could shoot that blast. Actually, came from PVE first. We were just like, oh, this is. A lot more fun and like oh i wonder if mm -hmm. this could apply to the base kit plus we're doing all the other chains of pvp and 
Uh, so we started playing with it in PvP. So I think you're right, and I think cases, they took like, too it, long. It feels like it works. And you, I would uh, rather them take long. Yeah, if people already like, think the game's the dead, but those people who say it's dead is probably going to come back for Overwatch 2. If people are going to come back anyway, you may as well take your time rather than rush it out. They've already... The biggest issue that they had is that it's creating an Overwatch 1 drought, right? It's not that it's taking long. The problem is that they stopped releasing stuff for Overwatch 1. So therefore, it just feels like there's no content coming into the game. PvP VE mode, I called it, which is like a hybrid mode. Because I think, like, I, I get the expectation that people will probably ask about that pretty quick if we want to do that. And so I was like, let's just try it, try mode of it. And uh, it was a little dirty because it was like, there wasn't a lot of balancing done. It was just like, literally oh, my just friends called Overwatch Dead and then convinced me to play it. Yeah, they were against players. Everyone still comes back to play tragic, Overwatch every now and then. Uh, it was pretty interesting. You know what? The, like, you know what the, 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 the thing that I think makes Overwatch yeah, different, exactly. right? It is a casual game. We could do that. I there is. I have no one. Like obviously, I can't say this for Overwatch, but I've talked to other people who are like, like "Oh yeah, fun, I come back and play yeah, Overwatch from time to time." Just like <laughs> me and my friends, we go play it for like a month, and then we just don't touch it for like a year again, and then we come back and play for a month. You know what game I don't come back and play? Valorant. Which I, I think is. I stopped fun. playing that game and I haven't even wanted to get close to touching that thing again. And, and that's the that difference, right? Wrong. Overwatch is a casual you know, game a that people love to like, say it's dead, but people still like, play it. Do you work on other <laughs> so it's like, it's not really dead. We and then we have Overwatch 3 coming out, so like. Map, or the push game mode came out of a whole different game mode. I think we all have a love hate relationship with Overwatch, right? So, but it's still a fun game. Most of the times when you come back and play. Capture the flag into like a main version of of overwatch and we weren't really able to do it like if but you if you said overwatch that. league is dead and the um, and are, like hyper competitive is you have more legs to stand on really, i think really really excited i don't agree with you um, i think overwatch is doing fine we'll it's not doing great it's doing to, fine but talk to our players and the, the, casual, the casual audience is still doing very well i love that yes more ways to play is <laughs> yes is, is totally fine with me and i'm sure the rest of the community uh what it's uh something that i've actually kind of like oh yeah sorry today. i did put my it's, it's one of the things that's like a little bit newer to I, I've, I've been having to constantly move my uh my cam based on what they do and try sorry. Out things that look like they've kind of made their way in uh i, I feel like that has been a huge tool for you guys uh for really just kind of testing out the, the april fool stuff uh, you know, Jeff, I don't, I don't know if I can convince you, but give me the flying F1 cars need turrets. I hope F1 is watching. I would watch F1 more if there were turrets on their cars. That's all I'm saying. Battle Faros and ignore my team, but uh, a lot of a lot of some of that stuff is really interesting that you guys are able to try with the experimental. Yeah, it's been so powerful. I mean, I, I feel like uh, it's sort of a, a developer dream in a sense to be like, because you're always just like, I don't know, maybe this is kind of cool. Can we just like? show this to people and get their impressions but yeah like, you can't really do that in fact we've talked about in the past about expanding maybe even showing more stuff but um you know like what if we showed like crazy early level layouts that was just all like gray box stuff like, okay how early can we show frosty feet it's like really ridiculous. really trying to kill this baby deep right now here's a you know a stick Yo, what is this like, right? like a pit stop like, <laughs> not even worth giving feedback on or what but like um so it, it's 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 been powerful and we're still looking at ways to sort of use it and you know it's just another great feedback tool to get from the community. Oh, what's so funny, we were talking the other day and it's like the April Fool's patch was ridiculous, but then when like you saw like some of the communities like oh, this is kinda cool and you're just like, Wait, no, yeah. um, like, <laughs> yeah. like like uh, we, we get the Sigma's cool to fly for a day or two, but like we, we can't have that all the time, right? <laughs> Exactly. Uh, I think solo deal yeah, will rely uh, heavily on soaking stuff. The, yeah. The blue team kind of approach the the final uh, area. And but then, like the uh, that's the thing. If you're gonna do solo tank about, Devo, uh, and here's the thing: is people like, oh, this hero is gonna be useless. This hero is gonna be useless. You know, they're going to change the heroes so that they fit in the new system. And they keep talking about that. How they keep iterating the heroes based on the situation. They're like, hey. Um, Obviously, we it, see a lot of the Reinhardt it, changes, but we haven't seen, you know, we saw a little Zaya one of like, hey, we need to give her two first, bubbles now that she can choose started, perfectly. Really I'm sure Diva will get changes, like, right? If if her kit doesn't feel vali viable like, enough, you can give, really what if you just give Diva a stupid um, amount of Diva and Matrix and again, we, right? The team is amazing, or make it bigger, or make really her more defensible, like make her less shit, or something like that. Give her a ton of armor. There's a ton of things that you can give Diva to make her feel useful and balance her around being the only tank. You know, um... It's it's definitely there's parts of it that are harder, you know. Yeah, like, like maybe they've already done that and we just don't, don't notice all it, right? Have home offices, you know. Like I'm just I just work in my bedroom, you know. I just have to make sure I make my bed every day before I I go on calls. <laughs> um, and then the team, it's um it's really grown. We 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 um 
Kind of like when we shipped Overwatch One when it launched, we were around sixty to seventy. Let Diva remag D Mac voluntarily to grow, um, from there, and I don't think we're yeah. And I think that's a big yet, thing that Nice Camry brings up that a lot of people are talking about is the best thing about five v five is everyone's talking about the synergy of tanks and stuff like that, and that is definitely going to be missed in the game, right? Like tank synergy has been a cool thing, you know, goats, all that kind of stuff. There were so many cool elements that came with it, but it was more broken than it was ever fun. In my oh, like, just kind of hearing everything that goes involved with quirky it. turtle from the fucking top rope. Um, massive changes to PvP. Like the, the scope of the game is so big. Uh, and I think that it's, it's I huge. think that it's gonna be cooler um, in the long run because you can really balance the game way better. I think you're gonna be able to balance tanks. You you, you take one element that, out of the game. It's kind of how it was when we did. Today, there was no hero limits to two two two, right? People were like it's gonna ruin you know, the strategy. It's like no, if anything, it just takes away a lot of the dumb strategy. Strategies what, that existed, like, right? When it wasn't two two two, there was a lot of weird. really stupid things that came but out like, that was just hey, unfun to play. Um, right like it was just like oh yeah okay sweet they have four tanks now that now we got to break that and that kind of stuff it wasn't fun obviously there were some things like goats that were fun um, but overall by making it 5v5 so it's going to be more it. it's going to be easier to balance and more fun yeah, to play overall forward. it's like all the heroes that you love from overwatch one with the learnings from overwatch one just evolutionize right you know pushing pushing the game forward looks like an all this does look like an awful choke to walk in ways to play it kind of gives me Havana vibes, you know? Third point Havana yeah, vibes. Uh, it comes down to how many flanks Reaper, exist. Reaper did his dance on the cart and it's crazy how balanced these games are. I thought they were pre-recorded, but Matt said they weren't. Uh, that that kind of concludes. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'm sure the, the devs are going to... They'll know who won and lost. Uh, I was not keeping score of the matches. Uh, I'm sure they'll, <laughs> I'm sure be, they they'll be pretty angry that we didn't keep score. Of, uh, of, uh, Where is Sigma? That is a good point. Lost, we haven't seen but, any Sigma. Uh, just, just a really awesome showcase of the, the PvP side of the game today. Uh, you guys could just kind of give uh, one lasting message to like everybody out there who's you know, playing Overwatch 1, interested in Overwatch 2 with all these PvP changes today. What would it be? I, I guess I'd one, I'd say thank you so much for watching um and thank you so much for like the the support and the Give communication hero. like the active communication that has been present from our community ever since um even from before overwatch came out so one i'd like to just give a heartfelt thank thank you to to everyone that's watching and has mm -hmm. been involved in our communities throughout the years and i also want to let you know that we we are still listening and and we are still taking feedback on this game and more than anything we just want it to be the best version of itself um that it can be and we're committed to to making it that we we come into work every day um kind of like passionate and excited to to work on this game um whether it's um some of the <sighs> Some of the things in hero mode that we're doing for for the pve side of the game or whether it's the the maps or, or or heroes that we're working on for the pvp side of the game so thank you all thank you for letting us build this game for all of you because we love doing it uh how about for you uh jeff and dion i, I pretty much echo what aaron said of course thank the community i mean we a lot of this kind of changes especially all this experimentation and things we've done starting Overwatch 2 was directly getting feedback from the community and hearing what people liked and didn't like, and hopefully that that, that comes across. Um, also to mention that, um, obviously, I, I think I've thrown it out a lot already, but this is all like pretty early work in progress still. We're still trying a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I mentioned that isn't even in this, so you can see that we're very actively working on this stuff. Um, so if you like see something like, you know, I see Doomfist running around, you know, smashing people against walls, and I can imagine somebody like, oh, Doomfist is still... He got the ultra-wide staring at you know, himself, yeah. Kill, but, like, the camera you know, placement I, could I definitely be better for Jeff. I changes to him, for example, especially if he did CC changes. So um, it's sort of like the double-edged sword of like being able to show you guys the stuff really early is, you know, some of it's not quite done yet. But um, I think it's it's been awesome to really, um, you know, try to keep communication, communication up and letting you guys see what we're working on. Yeah, and I, I echo the same thing. Um, we have a pretty incredible team working on the game, the character team, world building, QA, production, concepting. It's quite a crew. We love playing the game every day, and we look forward to getting it into players' hands soon. Yeah, no, I... Uh... You know, obviously, kind of, uh, you know, we're working with you guys on some of the stuff like this, and then some of the other members of the Overwatch team, like your guys' passion to just make this game the best is something that comes through. Soon, yeah, pause champ. So really excited to see what you guys have 
uh, in store for the future of the game. Uh, Aaron, what's next? Uh, what can you know the, the community look for? I think you guys have an AMA going on. Yep, we have one coming up in just a few days. Um, it's going to be on the, the main Overwatch Reddit, um, or subreddit, sorry. Um, so tune into that. And um, I think it's the three of us. Don't quote me on that. He's Don't signing remember. up Dion for it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not you guys, you just just just, just got signed up. I'll, I'll send the. Uh, All right, Aaron, let me know. Yeah, yeah, we'll someone's the, gonna be there answering questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll send the Outlook invites. No, we'll get everybody in here. That AMA is gonna, gonna, gonna end well, like yeah. We this morning, uh, no, 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 nothing will be needed for that. But uh, yeah, and then we have uh, Overwatch League uh, kicking off again tomorrow. Uh, we'll be discussing a lot of the things that we're talking about today here at 11:30 uh, PT. And don't forget, guys, the Overwatch anniversary event is going on right now in game. Some really awesome skins uh, to earn. You can get that combat, uh, you know, uh, the the new Ana skin. I know by uh, winning games, or you can just keep losing games constantly and eventually get it just way slower. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for everything today. Uh, truly a blast. Uh, thank you, Aaron, uh, Jeff, and Dion. That'll be it from us. Uh, follow, play Overwatch on all social medias to stay up with all the latest news for Overwatch 2. We'll see you next time. Bye, Matt. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. There it is. There it is. Um, actually, we'll stay here. No new maps. Uh, no new heroes is what I meant. Quick recap. All right. Let's go on, let's go on a TLDR, let's go down, let's go on a run. So 5v5 is the primary thing uh, that's going to be happening on. We have four new maps. What do we got? New York, uh, which is a hybrid map. We got uh, Rome and Toronto, which are push maps. And we got Monte Carlo, which is a escort map. Uh, there's hero passives. So uh, tanks are going to be booped less and give less ult charge when damaged. Uh, DPS have a faster movement speed uh, than everyone else, like a movement speed passive. And supports have a passive uh, health regeneration, kind of like Mercy's passive. Um... Oh, Rio. Wow, there, there were five maps? Shit, I forgot there were five maps. What's Rio? Rio was a escort map? Actually, I forgot what Rio is. Was it just a... Yeah, it's just an escort? Yeah. Was hybrid? All right, Rio's hybrid. All right, so we got two hybrid maps, one escort, two pushes. Wobble wobble, motherfucker. That's the TLDR where we ended up on the maps. Uh, those are all the passives. Um, that was really everything. Uh, obviously, I think they went into a lot of depth about, like, design philosophy. They showed us a lot of cool things, like the gun animations, sounds, all the, like, minute changes with some of the heroes. Like, we saw the Winston right-click. We saw the Reinhardt double, like, cancel charge, double fire strike, the Zaya rework, and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through all of those because there's just, like, a lot of little things. Um, oh, yeah, May No Freeze is also a big one as well. Um, yeah. So... It is interesting that we didn't see Brig, we didn't see Sigma at all in these playtests. I don't know why, but we didn't see either of those heroes. Um, but yeah, no Orisa yet, no Orisa as well. There are a couple of heroes that we didn't see, which was interesting. And that makes me think that there is more likely that there is going to be some pretty good reworks. Actually, no McCree either. I don't think we saw any McCree, so I don't think everything was available or accessible, right? As much as we did see a lot of different things, we didn't see everything. Um, and especially some heroes that you would expect to see. Didn't see Ball yet. Uh, they showed a little bit of Ball, not in these games. Oh no, there was Ball. There was definitely Ball, because I remember someone rolling around. They played Sim. They played Ball. They, they did, actually. Yeah, I actually remember the Ball. So... They talked about... They didn't show almost all of the CC heroes, yeah. So it's kind of interesting where we end up at that. Um, I think it was pretty informative. Obviously, we didn't get a date. I don't think we got anything. I don't think we expected more than that. I would have liked to have seen Sojourn's kit. That would have been really cool, and I would have been, like, super satisfied with it. But fuck it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I think it was really interesting. I think the direction, I like the direction. I like 5v5. And let me sum up my thoughts on 5v5 because everyone always asks me and I've been putting it off for this moment. 5v5 is a great idea and a great concept for Overwatch in the evolution of it. We've gone from having completely, you can stack as many heroes as you want to one hero limit to 2-2-2 two, 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 roll lock. And every time I think it has benefited the game in a positive way. One of the biggest issues with Overwatch as a 6v6 game is it is so chaotic to play and to watch. By adding 5v5, you're taking a lot of those elements away of like this just like overcoming these like issues of just like it's just too much. But I also think it opens up balancing a lot. Uh, obviously taking away tanks is a feel ba feels bad for Overwatch League tanks and everyone who is an off tank player or a main tank player because we don't need like I think those will just become into one role and whoever's best will succeed. That obviously sucks. But I think it's better for the long term of the game. As much as I'm sure there's a lot of people who are very worried about their jobs at this point. It's it's for the betterment of the game. And it's not like we were expecting to go to Overwatch 2 and everything to be exactly the same. Because if that happened, if we ended up in Overwatch 2, everything was exactly the same. They didn't change many things. They didn't make adjustments. People would be more upset and I would be more upset about that. I think these are great positive change. They talked about CC, taking CC out of the game. They've obviously making an active effort with one tank to remove the number of shields. The game direction feels very much more FPS orientated than strategy orientated. And that's not saying they're taking strategy away from the game, but having 6v6, there was so many more elements, so much more chaos that strategy was... Overall teamwork strategy of just playing six people as a death ball was successful. And I think that we're going to go back to mods of FPS elements of being able to just sort of have mechanical skill and mechanical difference will add more into the game which i think is good i think we've moved too far away from that element and that's why a lot of people who played in 2016 hate playing it in 2020 or 2021 is because it doesn't feel like you're ever shooting anything it feels like the fps aspects are literally only like two out of the six players are playing an fps game right so i don't think we can jump to conclusions yet i don't know if 6v6 is better i don't know if 5v5 is better we need to play it we need to see better players um, portray the game in 5v5 and see what they have to say because like that was a wild variance of players' skill level in that game and it wasn't that high. Like The average was not that high. So let's put our pitchforks down. Don't freak out just yet. I think we're in a really interesting place for Overwatch 2. I think these are all positive signs and I love that they're changing the game. So, um. So yeah, tank queues will be even more instant now. Yeah, and just playing the tank role will be super fun. I think the tank role, they've said that they can make, they can buff tanks and they can make tanks really fun and really strong and you'll get more healing because you're the only tank left, right? Uh, you, tank will be more fun because you'll feel more overpowered, but because there's only one of you, that's very easy to balance, right? Uh, we're obviously losing a lot of the tank synergy, a lot of the cool things that you can do with double tanks, but I think in the long run, the betterment of the game, not having two tanks will be there. So. So, uh, tank felt somewhat better in those games. I am, yeah, and w but we don't know, right? We, we're never really going to know until we see it. So. I think the game would just be easier to balance, right? It's a lot easier to balance the game when it goes from having 12 people in a server to 10 people in a server straight up easier to balance and i know a lot of people say yeah but that's at the cost of strategy think about all the things you can't do anymore it's like there will be new strategies 5v5 just doesn't mean oh well now all our, we just have to rely on our two dps players to kill everybody or all of a sudden trace is going to be overpowered like i don't think you can make those assumptions right now and i don't think that is how it's going to be strategy will just be different change i know yo what's up Dolph? change is hard it's scary I know, but we're going to make it through it. And every time we've always, we've made a change in Overwatch 2, like we've made a lot of massive changes in Overwatch 2, as I said at the start. This is just another one of those. And I don't think I can look back at any one of these major changes and be like, this was bad for the game. This actively really hurt the game. Like a lot of people say 2-2-2 hurt the game. It didn't. Yeah, I know you want to go play GOATS, but... Let me tell you this, if we were still playing GOATS like we were in 2019, you guys would have uninstalled this game a long time ago. The, the problem with GOATS and the reason GOATS 
everyone looks at goats and thinks, wow, this was such an incredible time. It was so much fun. It was so much strategy. Yes. But I think goats was the well, primary well, example well, of it is impossible to get to balance a game without roll lock because there is always going to be something that breaks the game. Like they added Brig to counter Tracer and instead it just enabled tanks and made this 3-3 just absolutely way fucking worse. And that was going to keep happening. There was always going to be this one dominant meta that was going to be happening. We're in 2-2-2 two, two, two now. We've been bouncing around it for now. And look at this. The, every patch change. Look at the Overwatch League season so far. There's so much diversity in what is being played. And that wasn't as con that wasn't as prominent when we were outside of a two 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 meta because there was always one thing that was significantly better: stacking tanks, stacking DPS, uh, triple support, all that kind of stuff. Right? There was always something. So, weren't dragons winning without goats? No, but that's a completely different argument. Like, yes, they won stage three, but that's that's because goats was on the way out and all the teams knew it so teams were just literally throwing random shit at the wall to see what would win them games that's what we did that's why everyone started playing sombra goats and stuff like that if we were if the game did not change and the game was not planning to change people would have still played goats or they would have find out found out ways to beat with goats so so i think this is a good change and i think it's good for the longevity of the game Those who are still playing the live game don't really have any comfort since the they didn't address any of the new systems and features. But like they didn't they're not even talking about betas, they're not even talking about dates, they're not giving us anything. Game systems are not something that you should talk about this early in the process, and here's why. You don't talk about those systems because if you promise something, then you can't go back on it because people get really fucking mad. They're not going to define and show you these systems until very close. They're showing us how the game is going to be played. They're not going to show us how the rank system is going to overhaul, how, uh, you know, SR is going to work, how all these, you know, battle passes, what are they doing for loot boxes, all that kind of stuff. And they don't need to. That stuff isn't super important to the game until we get closer to the date, right? They're showing us maps. They're showing us hero philosophy. They're showing us hero designs. That is what is important, I think, right now, this early in the project, because... If you think we're going to get Overwatch 2 in the next year, I think you have to be crazy. I don't think we're anywhere close to getting Overwatch 2. I think late 2022 is my guesstimate right now, and you don't want to be having them sort of describe those things yet. Cyberpunk 27.7 promised shit, and then look how that turned out. Yeah, and I, Overwatch did the same thing. Overwatch promised things very early on Overwatch. They promised things, and then they didn't deliver, and everyone got really mad. And then they were like, well, why, do, why are we promising things to people? You don't want to promise all these things to people before you know how it's going to work. Question is, how does Overwatch survive until Overwatch 2? Overwatch will always survive. Overwatch is fine. People aren't just going to all stop playing Overwatch, right? It's definitely going to keep decre decreasing in player base. It's still in a massive drought of gameplay. But I think Blizzard is riding on the coattails that when Overwatch 2 releases, a lot of those people are going to come back. So they're not, I don't think they're really worried about the longevity of Overwatch 1 right now. Jive Ghost, thank you for the Prime Gaming sub. Overwatch 2 is two years out, yeah. Like, it, it could easily be come out in 2023, right? Like... I'll be back, yeah. And I think there's a lot of people who aren't playing Overwatch anymore, but when Overwatch 2 comes, you better believe that they're going to play it. Are we happy or sad? I'm happy. I think it was good. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who are sad. Um, and I think there's reason. I think there's a, I think there is justification of I like 6v6 Overwatch more than 5v5. I think you can't come to a set judgment until you've played 5v5 Overwatch or we've seen more of 5v5 Overwatch. But I think it's an interesting step in the right direction. And the people who are talking about the reason we're going to 5v5 is for Overwatch League money, like Jane, is just ridiculous. And I feel bad for Overwatch League uh, tank players. I feel bad for people who have literally spent years of their life making careers as a tank player. And now all of a sudden there's only space for one instead of two. I feel bad for them. But at the end of the day, they are a massive, massive, massive minority in the grand scheme of Overwatch players overall. And the developers are not going to build the entire game of Overwatch 2 around making these hundreds of people happy who tried to build their career on Overwatch 1. And, and I think that's the reality of it, right? So. 
Yeah, and as Tanky said, you know what's going to be worse for everyone's careers? If Overwatch 2 sucks. And if it still has all the same issues that Overwatch 1 happens, has, and when people come back and play the game, they're like, hey, I still, I still am shooting shields. I still feel like I'm not doing anything. I don't want to play tank. If all those issues still exist in Overwatch 2, then everyone's just going to stop playing. That's how you lose money. And that's how everyone loses money because the game isn't successful. The developers are doing the best things that they think is for the game, and I, I can see the vision, right? And what the fuck does Activision... Yeah, you think Activision gives a shit about the Overwatch League? Remember, the Overwatch League is a tiny fraction of what Activision does. Like... Obviously, it is important to them, and they like having that corroboration, and it's great to have them both, but at the end of the day, they're just trying to make a successful Overwatch game. So... I can see like two to three uh, tank players per team. No, one guy is going to be greater than all. Yeah. So I'm going to end that there though. I'm going to cut the YouTube video here. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys find this interesting. It's, I know it's a very long thing. It went for a long time. This is like two and a half hour VOD. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Got some of my takes. Obviously, don't freak out. If you are freaked out, it's going to be okay. We'll get more information soon. I think it's a cool direction for the thing. So bye YouTube. Love you all. Thanks for watching. And I'll uh, see you guys soon.